So Hi. we can start now. What are, what are we starting? <laughs> I feel like we're already knee deep into this. Yeah, hey we're... everyone, welcome to Neighbor Science, the only <laughs> podcast about political economy and anime. This is going to be a long intro. I am Ryan Salisbury. I'm Chris Nivens. Uh, uh, I'm Chloe. The person saying "uh" is Chloe. That's you. Uh, Which I also said "uh." Oh, that's trademark. True bot angel centers. <laughs> yeah, it's a neighbor science goth angel centers crossover. And Reed's here. <laughs> and Reed. Yeah, me. Reed. <laughs> we got Reed. Three time guest, I think. Reed. Yeah. Yeah. I guess Hell yeah, so. dude. Three time champ, beating these losers at their own game. Yeah, whatever game that is. I think you've been on the podcast more than Peter now, actually. Uh, <laughs> oh, <yeah>. Peter owned. <laughs> I haven't been on the podcast since Peter was here. I have. I talked about anime. Mm. That's true. I also yep. talked about anime. So, uh, today we don't have any particular topic. Uh, we a have... Plan. A good episode coming up next plan. week. This one's going to be bad, actually. It's going to be a very no, bad This is going to be the top-rated episode. This is going to be the, the best neighbor science episode ever. <laughs> i got to put out more content like that. Uh, so I do have a list of things uh, that I'm vaguely interested in covering. One, one main one is uh, I played this board game Ugh. last week called Secret Where? Hitler. Oh, oh yeah, and it just made me so fucking mad. Yeah, and I'm already. Mad. I think True will be able to contribute to this because True, you seem to know the most out of us about the history of like the rise of Hitler and stuff. I don't want to do that. Why that is? Hmm. Uh, <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> strange interest. But like, uh, so the concept of the game is like you you get like secret cards at the beginning that tell you whether you're like. A fascist or a liberal. Those are the only two choices. Oh, fuck. So because that's all that yeah, politics was back then, the just like game. it is now. <laughs> uh, actually, yeah, I'm uh, Rosa Luxemburg. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. Yeah. So, so no Rosa, Rosa Luxemburg, but there is a Hitler, and uh, one person it, is Hitler. Ryan. And oh, what's basically, a Germany like, without a Luxemburg, but a Hitler. <laughs> oh my God. The thirties. Ryan. Yeah. Well, yeah. It's an idea, but you have to buy it. Uh huh. You get a rotating president, so each person takes turns being the president. They pick the chancellor, and then uh, the president picks three policies, like their little cards, and then passes two of them to the chancellor, and then the chancellor puts one on the board. And it could be either a liberal policy or a fascist policy. Which we know are different. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's, that's one thing. And then, like, the other thing is, like, so the victory condition is just, like, liberals stay in power for long enough. Like, yeah, <laughs> that is the opposite of reality. <laughs> Long enough right. to bring to life Super Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the game should just uh, be that like, on one side of the card, it says fascist. On the other side of the card, it says liberal. And you just turn them all over at the end. <laughs> you just roll, you, you just flip a coin and figure out which one <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> it seems to be. <laughs> oh, Jesus. What a fucking travesty. Yeah. So, like, the whole time we were playing, I was like, uh, I just want to let everyone know that I'm a communist and not a liberal. <laughs> That's always such a power move in those secret identity games, just saying <laughs> what you are, or just lying about what you are and pretending like you're telling right. the truth. Right. Well, if you're like, a fascist, uh, the whole goal is to lie about who you are. And say, say, oh, you know, no, I'm actually a liberal. Yeah, yeah you see, everyone's super advanced the most game because part. lying is built in. Kind of like Clue. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What if you just came out and said, like, uh... Like I'm the fascist, so then nobody would believe. You just you come out, you find out you're Hitler, and then you come out and you're like, uh, you "My brain is still in recovery mode from taking in all these high level ideas." Oh no, it's just you know your teenager, you're so awkward finding out you're Hitler, all that. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it happens to all of us at some point. Right? Yeah, yeah. Throwing just mustaches in funny places. Yeah. <laughs> oh, did you see that article about, like, the, oh, my son was alt-right for a couple months, and it was the worst experience <laughs> because I didn't know what the fuck to do because he has counterpoints for everything. Oh, yeah, I, I saw, like, excerpts of it, and I was like, Jesus, this is pathetic. <laughs> my that, son was Hitler like... for a phase, and now I don't know what to do anymore. <laughs> it sounds like the, the the real thrust of the article is, I'm very stupid. Yes. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
No, I, I love the end of writing. <laughs> Yeah, one of the inherent flaws of games like Secret Hitler is that not only is it just, you know, this kind of, you know, implausibly binaristic, you know, uh, two party system, if you will, um, <laughs> but also that it's, you know, a historical in the sense that, like, oh, just liberals and fash, you know, just liberals and fash, and they're totally not, not the same, you know, and, but also like that because it's a game set in this kind of weird, bizarre fantasy world, uh, there's two things that uh, aren't present in that that are present in actual fucking politics, which is one, uh, you can change your views or someone else can change your views. And two, right. that you can fucking organize. Uh, and and it sounds like in the game, there's just these two immutable sides and you just all kind of like, like there's no way to find out. It sounds like that somebody's a fascist without just kind of like guesswork. Um, whereas like, if anybody paid attention yeah. to anybody in real life, which we're trying to make people do now, it's pretty fucking obvious where the fascists are and what they're up to, you know? Um, yeah, no well, if you're not a liberal, it is. Well, that's the thing, right? Yeah. The game is designed the thing is only that this for game is actually a very accurate like, uh, portrayal of how liberals see the world. <laughs> yes, no, that's that's a good true. Point. Yeah, the policies yeah, don't yeah. mean anything. The right. policies don't actually mean anything. Are. It's just points right. for your team scores, and there's two teams, right. and right. you're on one or the other. And, uh, and the fascists and, could, like, the communists would be on the fascist side as well because they're in their the minds, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because they want to feed Damn. people. Forcibly. I never thought of it like that. Yeah. 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 It's actually a stunning critique of the liberal worldview. It's great. Yeah. It's great. So we should actually. <laughs> Spears. I was talking to a liberal friend of mine today, and. Um, she said something like, and this is like, we're, we were texting back and forth because we we're both bored at our own jobs and, you know, that's not typical at all, right? But so she said some shit about how she's like, yeah, I'm, I'm a little bit like nervous about the future. And I'm like, yeah, you should be, you should prepare. And she's like, yeah, I really want to like up my survival skills. But then she said, um, you know, it sounds scary to learn how to shoot. So then I was like, well, just like think about it as like any tool, blah, 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 blah. And then she was like, wait, 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 I don't want to, I don't want to shoot a gun. And I was like, yeah, I, nobody should want to shoot a gun. And then she's like, but wait, what are you arguing? Are you saying I should? And I was like, yeah, you should be able to shoot a gun. And then she's like, no. And then she like pulled this liberal shit out. And then I was like, okay, so how do you feel about a crossbow? <laughs> and, then she, and then she just didn't seem to mind that one. And I was like, okay. Weird. Like, yeah. The it's fun. just like you tell her fucking symbolic Consider shit. that maybe uh, it's fun. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> most people shoot guns because it's fun. I think. Yeah, yeah. The thing about crossbows, crossbows though, is they too. can go through level four trauma plates, so you could actually kill a U.S. military guy with a crossbow. Exactly. Yeah, and this is the beauty. No. Of, I mean, uh, neighbor <laughs> science does not endorse the killing of U.S. military personnel in any way, shape, yeah. or form. They neighbor science. Do, <laughs> neighbor science does endorse crossbow shooting crossbows. <laughs> Uh, Chloe is not a member of Neighbor Science. <laughs> hey, I yeah. I have access to your social media. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she also brought up uh, this uh, bizarre story that I don't know if you all have uh, seen it, but um, this uh, uh, set of people in Bavaria were found dead in a hotel room uh, with multiple okay. crossbow bolts in them, um, and okay. they they had. <laughs> They had apparently just gone quietly up together, like the three people, this like older guy and these two like thirty year old women, um, to their to their hotel room with like a Coca Cola and a bottled water, <laughs> and then the next morning they were found by like room service or some shit with multiple crossbow bolts, and, like and it seemed like maybe a murder suicide. People weren't really sure. Um, the people who found them were like, yeah, like uh, we we noticed them last night. They were kind of weird. They were kind of gothy. And I was like, I don't know if I should love or hate that. Uh, and then, and then it turned out that like when they investigated the homes of these three different people, um, there were two more dead women found in one of their homes with crossbow bolts in them. And so like, it sounds like some kind of bizarre, like five person death cult that maybe just had or there's a crossbow serial killer or there's a crossbow serial killer who knew these people or something or obsessed over them. Probably, yeah. Uh, Ramsey Bolton, my guess. Uh, Ramsey probably went to the happened. same metal shows as yeah. them. Yeah, probably. So that's like a fun little. Uh, I Damn. guess they don't have to endure climate change um, <laughs> and shit. Maybe they're ecofash. Maybe they're ecofash. Who knows, right? Yeah. <laughs> 
death metal guys like going in the forest, so it's true. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So, what else do I have on here? So there's uh, we could talk about uh, Joe Biden or Brunig's sovereign wealth fund. Wait, is this a bet or like uh, a, uh like a yay nay thing? These are two two uh, branching timelines that we could step into. Okay. I okay. I do my best to completely ignore Brunig in every way, so I wouldn't have anything <laughs> yeah. to say about that. <laughs> I also try to ignore Biden. Yeah, I kind of try to ignore <laughs> Biden too. So I, I don't really have much to say on either of those. Aren't they like the same person? He just made me so mad this week with his the the video clip that was circulating from like 2007, where he's talking about going going to the hood and like telling black men to wear condoms. Oh wow, what a what a stand up fella. Yeah, um, this of course. Only twelve years ago. <laughs> which one of them? Which one of them? Is this? <laughs> say what? Right. Uh, I was gonna say this is the same motherfucker who recently said that like you should be able to be fired by robots. So like, you know, that's a class. Oh, Brunig, yeah, Brunig, yeah, yeah. Brunig, yeah. Yes. Like, hey, black men, wear condoms. Like, what? Who are you? And then like, <laughs> by the way, I think robots should be in charge of firing. Like, oh, workers. you're still talking about Biden. I think you're just... talking about Brunig now because Brunig no. also thinks that. No, I, I'm saying Brunig. Right, right. You need oh, to okay. specify which one you said You need the to thing. specify <laughs> who said things, yeah. Oh. Now this is chaos. This is I what mean, I it was, it was Joe Biden that said the. <laughs> oh, okay, thing. okay. I mean, I would uh, believe it from either of them, so that's the problem. Incidentally, the only other topic I have written down is robots taking jobs, so uh, I guess we, we, can go to, we can pivot to that robot, since no one cares about the other two things. Robot managers need yeah. to wear condoms. When they fuck up. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need mostly because I don't want uh, white lithium grease in my asshole. Exactly. Uh, I don't need, need rust getting into not? my fissure. Uh, you need to wear condoms when you fuck the Chinese firm bank <laughs> robot that jerks you off. That's important. Yeah. It's yeah. like it's like the same thing. Like you know, they never wipe the mic down between people at karaoke. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Every everyone. Yeah, you just maybe imagine uh, going singing karaoke after someone that was doing pickleback shots all night. Oh, <laughs> oh man, yeah. Probably yeah. the worst thing ever. <laughs> it's sad right. that those robots are worse than being waterboarded. Who, uh, it's sad that those <laughs> robots are taking the jobs of people who jerk people off at sperm banks. <laughs> That's a job, oh, right? Man. Yeah, well, I was like that's like my, my backup if this degree thing doesn't work out. <laughs> but now there's a you know, taken jobs taken. You know, this is this is contrary to the usual Republican line, I guess. But you know, <laughs> are they job creators or are they job automators? You know, but I guess they're anti-sex workers, so, so it kind of makes sense. Uh, Chloe's brother just signed on, I guess. He hasn't joined the he, voice chat yet, though. Tell him to bring something to the potluck. Uh, make sure you to wipe down the mic as you use it. Yeah. I don't have any food in this house. <laughs> Do you have booze or uh, other substances? Oh, probably. Okay, well then that's fine. We'll just live off of beer calories. So, um, what do y'all think about the actual prospects at this point in in our uh, you know ever building history of uh, robots actually taking jobs? Because I'm more skeptical of it now than I used to be. I used to be like full on, like zeitgeist movement, right. oh, techno optimist. Yeah. Like, uh, you know, everything's going to be automated by like you know 2020. Basically, is <laughs> probably what I thought. Mm-hmm. Um, I think. I have... oh, well, uh, someone else talk. Go ahead, I have some thoughts, but I, I'd rather not talk first about it because I'm not the smartest. <laughs> <laughs> Chris. Yeah, um, I, I think that, like, this is one of those things where the economists are going to, like, get into a bunch of fucking garbage terminology, like skilled and unskilled labor, um, and the business people will just be, like, floundering as they generally do with, like, fucking, um, you know, expenses and marketing and, like, who are we as a business and, like, what's the future look like, you know? And uh, So, like, I think that, like, there's going to be a lot of, yeah, like, like, obstacles to actual like pervasive automation of just like normal jobs. Uh, I think automation is a big 
concern for like manufacturing jobs, but that's already happened for the most part. Um, uh -huh. Right. Because that's the kind of thing you can automate. Right. And we, we kind of, I think a lot of us who are like uh, uh, thinking about automation in more like kind of realistic terms these days as much as, much as we can um, are kind of aware that like, there's just certain things you can't automate. There's like kind of uh, human intelligence, there's like social intelligence issues. So there's going to be, I think, Econ and business types are probably going to figure out how to tier their um, labor uh, according to things that can and can't be automated according to their estimation. And then they'll just like, as usual, use like the quote unquote market to just shove poor quality shit down our throats with the automated products uh, and services. Sort of like when, when you think about like, oh, you know, all these fucking asshole fluff pieces on on media and shit about, oh, you know, your next barista could be a vending machine robot, you know, and like, you're like, dude, I already have, there's already a fucking coffee machine in my office. There's already, you know, this shit. Like, half of your job as a barista is getting yelled at by people who are like, yeah, mad yeah, at their life. So exactly. a robot that's could not replace that role. <laughs> exactly. That's literally like most of the, um, most of the work of a barista. Uh, yeah. the value of a barista or to talking customer. to lonely dudes being being a, a cute teenage girl and talking to lonely 40 year olds exactly exactly um and and basically to perform emotional labor and to be yep. like a vessel for fantasy you know and and so forth yeah. um yeah uh and so i think that you know like there's gonna be limited automation in sort of um what do you call it like more like uh Things like yeah, like it's gonna be uh, like mechanization, but with computers, shit. basically. I think. Right, right. They're gonna they're gonna find like points of opportunity in like, um, on the map. You know, like I said, like points in like airports and in malls and shit like that. You know, and like Japan already has that kind of thing with the vending machines. Um, but I think like automated distribution, sure. Automated manufacturing, that's already there. Automated like limited functions that. You know, again, like this is this is stuff that we've expected for a while anyway. It's not necessarily going to be take our jobs. It's just going to be like they're going to use it as an excuse to be like, well, you add less value to the work now, even though you're more productive. Right. It's just going to be part of the same trend overall. Um, and then they're going to just use that to ratchet up the different like kind of caste system. Uh, enforcement. Yeah, I mean, I was thinking about the um, the idea that. Uh, like pay is based on skill because like uh yeah. murder brian murder brian was talking about like he was arguing with someone on twitter uh who was like uh yeah people's wages depend on their skills and he was like well i used to be a roofer and yep, that's a yep. really fucking hard job that takes a lot of skill and uh, i only made nine dollars like 950 an hour yep. and they're like no that's actually an unskilled job but it's not really and like on the other hand if you look at the high paying jobs like there's a certain amount of intellectual like gatekeeping, but really um, like you learn most of the skills that you need for the job on the job. Like they train you in what to do, or you just have to figure it out yourself. So like either every job is a skill job or every job is an unskilled job because they, I think they both take like almost equal amounts of like skills training Unless you get into like something really niche, like deep sea yeah. diving, which I would call that a skilled job. Okay. But like, okay. yeah, being like okay. a a business manager, like you're not gonna fucking know anything about that company before you get to the company. Yeah. So yeah, like, I was yeah. It's unskilled because you're hired with no skills and you have to be trained yeah. on the job. Yeah. So I was actually and then if you're like on a manufacturing assembly line, you have to be trained how to do yeah, the exactly. thing that you're going to be doing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, true. I think you were trying to. Cut so, and then I think, uh, in terms of automation, like I, the reason I put this on the list was like I was listening to Trash Feature today, and uh, the person they had on was talking about how a lot of automated tasks are actually like, like he said that there's basically a news story every week about how this thing that we thought was automated is actually just being done by people in the background. <laughs> uh, yeah, like, yeah. like Alexa is one of those things. Right. Uh, yeah, those canisters where, have like to contain a tiny woman. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, like I don't know the specifics like of the story, guy. but I, I'm guessing that like some of the tasks that people ask him to ask it to do is like 
They just have people in a, in a call center, uh, essentially. Well, if you're aware, uh, just real quick, if you're aware of, I mean, uh, the Mechanical Turk thing that Amazon does. They brought that up, yep. Yeah. Yeah, I've, I've tried that before. It's, it's bullshit. Uh, yeah, it is. So, you it's, know, and it's yeah, actually it's it's leveraging, it's leveraging exchange rates and local economy against, you know, um, uh, essentially foreign labor. Yeah, it's like... Which is then, of course, it's like disgusting. into leveraging against you, ours. Yeah. If you've never gone on to Mechanical Turk... Like go on there and look at the tasks that are available to you. Yep. I mean, yeah. I I look I was looking at this in like 2013 or 2014. I was like unemployed and needed money, and like everything on there paid like ten cents. Yeah. Or if you were really lucky, it would pay a dollar. But it was like it would be like an hour's worth of work. It was just insane. Yeah, exactly. You know, I I actually did the same thing. It's ridiculous. It's like uh. Write uh write five uh five hundred word articles about uh these products that we have. It's fucking ridiculous. It's and it like, pays like thirty cents. Yeah, it's active active devaluation in the market uh economy of actual like like labor, you know. Um and like yeah. I said, it basically it forces you if you're in um a higher paying economy, right? it degrades your uh, essentially your, your sort of like labor power, if you will, um, because um, if you're willing to take that work to, you know, it's kind of like assholes who are like, Oh, will you photograph my wedding and then I'll pay you an experience. It's like fucking <laughs> fucking shiv those people. First of all, um, yeah. but also shiv everybody who came up with the mechanical Turk idea uh, because it's, it's essentially it's implicit outsourcing. Um, and that again, that's abuse of foreign labor, right? quote unquote, foreign labor. And then that's in turn used to leverage against quote unquote, domestic labor who can't afford to be paid only that much for their work unless they agree, which is, a, you know, it's, it's a fucking psychological manipulation that then feeds into the market logic. Um, and that Jeff Bezos can essentially end world hunger like a hundred fucking times and, and fuck that guy. I, I think the best example of why, like how, bullshit automation is at this point is like the self checkout lines yeah. where like all it does is like transfers the actual labor to a different person. Mm -hmm. Well, two, two different people. So it goes from one cashier who's making, you know, a certain amount to run one register to one cashier who's running eight registers and all of the people that are checking their shit out. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh yeah, I think that, touches on kind of an important concept like my my brief thoughts on this is like i have a friend uh also named chris who is like uh his job is basically he's like an automation industrial automation like engineer repair guy um oh. so his job just like takes him all around the place going to factories with uh broken down aging automation systems and he has to like you know fix them and troubleshoot them and stuff that's kind of what I, it's kind of the same almost with the, uh, the checkout line sort of thing is like, you know, the automation is more like just shifting the focus of the labor. So if you have the, right. the, the program or the robot automate one thing, then you also have to have somebody to fix the robot or correct the errors humans make using the robot. You know, so it's sort of like not really replacing labor. It's just kind of like, changing the object of it, I guess. Yeah, I mean, I think if you had, like, a liberatory version of automation where it was actually, you know, reducing human toil and benefiting everyone, then if if the only jobs are to, like, fix the robots, I think that's fine. I think that's, like, the yeah. ideal outcome, really. See, right, I think you're missing the point. You know, liberation is when um, you reduce my human toil. Mine. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's yeah, that is a good point. Yeah, yeah. I don't give a I fuck about it that way. Well, so. Right, right, right. And I, I, I have the right to what make it happen. Oh, that, that I have the right to create a pyramid of misery to reduce my own human toil. Um, and that okay. there are some that people in that pyramid who are willing to toil a little bit to abuse the rest so that they'll toil a lot. It's, <laughs> it's simple. It's actually human nature and it's the natural order of things. So I mean, it's been know. that way for uh, 200,000 years or something like that. Right. Yeah. yeah ever since the Sumerians know. built the first automated checkout stand. Yes. 
that's that's why they're considered the first with, like, civilization. Yeah. Lay jar batteries, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't know. Like ancient India had uh, UFOs, so true. that's true. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a golden age of um, UFOs. Elon Musk has actually been alive for five thousand years. <laughs> that would explain a lot. <laughs> He's I wonder like, if that's a thing like um he's been the one doing like it all. we think whatever our whatever our <laughs> most recent technology is is like the peak the peak of technology like uh you know people before computers existed like saw like aircraft shaped things from ancient India and were like oh my god they were like the most advanced civilization ever because they had aircraft whereas now we'd be like ah aircraft isn't that great you know but if they had computers <laughs> right that would be crazy that'd right be now. impressive. <laughs> so it's moving the goalposts like a good yes. conservative yeah <laughs> okay cool so, yeah. so we've covered years, be like uh yeah go ahead oh I, I was just i was just gonna recap you know we've covered um goth crossbow murders and automation <laughs> <laughs> and and basically basically talk about <laughs> Right. <laughs> uh, Reed, you said you wanted to talk about Game of Thrones. Oh, I don't know. Oh, Do we have any really Game of Thrones people it. besides Chris in here? <laughs> See, Casey watches Game of Thrones. <laughs> okay. Everybody's pissed off about the last season because uh, the writers are supposedly ruining everyone's favorite characters. Yeah, but... I know literally everything that's happened because, because of, yeah. people have been so mad about it. <laughs> I have like all the game of, right? I have yeah. all the Game of Thrones words muted on my timeline, and I still <laughs> have managed to get all of the events. I'm, what is everyone mad about? I I don't know. I'm unaware. Uh, I think they're yeah. spoiler alert. They're particularly mad about the latest episode where everybody's favorite um, queen, the dragon queen Daenerys, uh, trying to take the city. She gives into her. Uh, more violent fascistic impulses and lets her dragon just like burn hundreds and thousands of civilians uh just because she wants to say fuck you to the much. to the queen she's fighting um and everybody's like and, oh my god they totally ruined her character but uh, i saw that coming a mile away yeah. yeah it was totally there the entire time people that's just that's what uh, monarchs do yeah, yeah exactly yeah. Yeah, the take I've heard I don't is watch that they Game just, of Thrones, but they that just makes did sense really to me. sloppily. Like, yeah. uh, like they built it up, but they didn't properly like go out with it. Yeah. You know, like uh, they just rushed it. Yeah. And then the other thing that I've heard people be mad about is that uh, that Arya just like uh, killed the Night King with a with a dagger. Yeah, with, I mean, like, no really big fight or anything that like that. Was. It's it's part of the like lore that dagger was would be able to do that and i actually expected that but not so suddenly so like my one critique of this season is like i agree that like um you know um uh, like aria's dagger thing like that worked that was something that was built up to in the background um daenerys the dragon queen she was gonna torch a lot of people and she's already been doing it a lot and that is not supposed to be surprising but I do think, like, my critique yeah, is... Yeah, Hillary like, Clinton. Well, yeah, well, I was actually going to say she's the secret Hitler, to tie it back. Um, yeah. That's why the world were yeah. freaking out, because they thought that she was Hillary and she's secret Hitler, and then they, they're not realizing that it's the same fucking thing. Um, she passed three pa- fascist policies, and now she gets to kill everyone. Yes. Yes, exactly. And she's got great PR and aesthetics. Like, that's part of what's throwing people off is they're like, but she's so pretty and nice. And you're like, Break is she hand, nice, though? Bro. Is she nice? Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, but, like, I think that my one criticism is just that, like, the writing is a little bit rushed and, and the pace is not great. And so people think we're yeah. kind of lurching through it. And apparently George R. R. Martin, the, the actual author, did say that, like, in order to do justice to the plot development, they would need, like, more than one final season so i'm like okay but he also has not written the final two fucking books so like that's both on them and on him so i think there's that but i think yeah like all, all these characters are doing what they would have done you know yeah yeah um, yeah it's just My... like uh the end of yu yu haka show where like the uh the producers of the manga like rushed the author and so like yeah. he wrote the story that he intended to but it was so compressed that it was like really sloppily executed 
Yeah. yeah well, at least there's no filler. I, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Actually, I could go with some Game of Thrones filler episodes. That would be fun. Yeah. I'm yeah. a big fan of filler episodes that are like, I like filler episodes that are like funny and just kind of like slice of life, getting to see like the characters doing something. Plot. The episode, like, like the episode of Naruto, yeah, where they filler. try and f- see Love what's under filler. Kakashi's mask. Yeah, that one's good. Yeah, <laughs> it's really <laughs> a really fun episode. <laughs> Dude, that, yeah, that's the, the thing, thing, right? Is like, yeah, like there's filler where there's like needless kind of sitcom shit, and there's filler yeah. that is like character and world building. Which, like, it sounds like the Kakashi episode was actually character and world building. And so you're like, oh, I appreciate this. This is really cool. And no, fun. that was the sitcom episode, and that's why it was good. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, don't, I don't. Yeah, usually the, like, uh, the writers of the anime are not, I mean, they're not remotely as good or, like, uh, connected with the world as the, you know, the original manga author. So uh, any, any kind of world building they do is either, like, I mean, for one, it's like not going to become part of the actual story because it can't be. It's like non. It's basically non-canon, right. um, because they I they mean, can't just incorporate it into the story because the story's being written by the the manga author, uh, or you know, it, it just sucks. <laughs> the only kind of like universally bad filler is flashback episodes. Yeah, yeah that's true. Yeah, yeah. Even American shows have that. Yeah, <laughs> no, I you know what. So you know what I realized recently? Peaceful... There's there's a uh, there's one metric shit ton of flashback during the Rock Lee versus Gara fight, and it and it takes away from the fight. No kidding, it's so sad. Yeah, that needs a fan edit. Because that's like the edit. best fight ever, and that like the thing is that like it kind of makes sense if you're like say watching one episode a week and you're seeing that fight, which is I think like four episodes. Um, the, but like the fact is that like. Like now we're binge watching it on Netflix or whatever, and so we're watching all four episodes at once, and all the flashbacks are just redundant at that point. They need to make a. They need I to make who a... it was, but someone pointed out that like the the reason they ended up doing that in Naruto is basically because like they introduced every single character like right at the beginning, mm-hmm. and so they had like all these different storylines. Uh, that started happening at once. And so like for anyone to know what the fuck was happening on like a serialized basis, they would have to keep repeating like what already happened. Whereas if they like introduced them gradually, they wouldn't have had to do that nearly as much. Mm -hmm. That's kind of an exaggeration, but basically every Naruto episode is like two thirds filler or two flashbacks. It's kind of the deal with one piece too. It's been running for like 20 years and the average viewer who's watching it on TV as it comes out in probably not watched every episode consecutively. So they have to kind of like remind people who the fuck this person, you know, what I'm fine with that in in one piece because there is a lot of stuff that's hard to remember because like some of that stuff that they show is like really minor details that you don't think are important when they happen. And then they come back later and it's like, you know, who the fuck is that guy again? <laughs> kind of thing. Yeah. Basically, oh, what I'm saying Naruto, is... Though. Oh, you first. I was going to say, basically what I'm saying is that what we need is a Netflix edit of Naruto. Not Netflix necessarily. It's just streaming <laughs> edit of Naruto. Um, <laughs> where they cut out all, most of the like flashbacks and stuff. Uh, so that we can... We only see it. get the whole 37 minutes. Once. Story. Yeah, what's yeah. that Dragon Ball Z fan edit thing that like cuts out all the extra stuff? <laughs> Dragon Ball Z yeah. abridged. Yes, yeah, or one one piece. That's the other. Oh yeah, there's Dragon hey, Ball Z piece about the filler. Which is official, and then there's Dragon Ball Z abridged, which is the actual. Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z Kai. My opinion. Is the... <laughs> we need a we need a Naruto Kai. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I was gonna say though. Speaking of Naruto, has anybody uh, checked out? first chapter of samurai 8 kishimoto the author of naruto has just started okay it's pretty well, I cool i've seen that I've yeah you can that. read it on the uh, shonen jump website english oh really, it's really cool. Oh, cool yeah it's really cool it's so it's kishimoto is like focusing on doing the writing and one of his assistants who worked on naruto with him is doing the art so it's got kind of like an interesting different spin can you, but can you link it in the chat yeah yeah um 
But it's really cool. It's basically... So far, the main themes seem to be, like, disability and trans... Okay. So it's like a sci-fi? Uh-oh. Uh... Oh, true. Oh, true. I think he had some noise coming in. Oh. Yeah. Samurai, these people have been transformed into, uh, you know, superhuman cyborgs. The main character... Superhuman Samurai Cyber Squad? Holy shit, dude. Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> uh... I think... I don't know how, how many people are old enough to remember that. <laughs> that was like a big thing when I was like five or six. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't think so I was in the country. I've never, I've never watched an anime or read a manga, so I wouldn't know. Oh, that's good for you. Oh, that wasn't even an anime. That was a that was an American like uh, live, live action show. Uh, I think it's one of the shows that was adapted from uh, whatever you call that genre of show that Power Rangers was adapted from. Tokusatsu. Sure. I fucking know that. <laughs> I never remember. <laughs> I never right. remember the what it's called. The point is that I'm not a weeb. That should be the. Oh first my god! Thing and it's make. okay. Mm-hmm. And it's uh, yeah. Cyber Squad with an S, like like Cyber with an S. Oh. That's not how you spell Cyber. Uh, are you a prescriptivist? That's you. <laughs> what, what, what are you accusing no. me of being a linguistic fascist now? Oh God. <laughs> This is getting dark. Up, um, <laughs> you, that's what you get for saying that something isn't how something is spelled. I think you're the secret linguistic Hitler, actually. Oh, God. <laughs> Let it not go. Past three <laughs> spelling rules versus three grammatical rules every turn. Yeah, I posted the uh, the Samurai 8 in the anime chat. Sweet. Especially, especially just like check out the first few opening pages they did in color. It's fucking gorgeous. Yeah, anime really chat, is, uh, weebs. Yeah, the visual style. I actually can't stuff. access the anime chat uh, because I'm not a weeb. So not okay. weeb. <laughs> I'm also not a weeb. Anyway, Yojo Senki. I actually haven't that. created a weeb role on the uh, server, so uh, all of y'all are lying. <laughs> uh, well, I'm not. So <laughs> yeah, true. Who posts random screenshots from? I don't. Crappy isekai all day. <laughs> Citation uh, needed. <laughs> I got received. You know, you I'm just waiting. For... This is not citations needed. This is. Uh, What's up with that profile actually. picture, true? Uh, the what now? Yeah. That profile picture. Uh, it's uh, not fan art from an H bomb stream, so I'm already better than <laughs> yeah. you, gamer shit. I don't. I don't get what all this My... sexless weeb, weeb shaming is about. You know, like. It's like taking the uh, the fact that like actual weebs, like weeb weebs, like prescriptivist definition weeb would be bad, so they just associate any like anime liking with that. And also, you get all the Nazis with anime profile pictures that everyone's right, like. Right. It's just fun to make fun of nerds because we're all jocks here. You know? Fucking we're all nerds, yeah. anti-nerd action. When I was yeah. in high school, I was dunking people in toilets and flushing them. You know? <laughs> Shoving nerds yeah, in lockers. Having sex and smoking school. cigarettes. I, I was recently... Driving around in my Camaro. Yeah. At my school, they host a little, like, kind of, like, student-run anime convention every year. Um, <laughs> and I went there with some friends. And I was I was, I was, was having to, like, do a little bit of calling them out for uh, weeb shaming. Because a lot of anime conventions I don't like. They're, like, creepy, full of adults, like, very mm-hmm. corporate, lots of money, very, like, uh, people are on just like on drugs and trying to like creep on people but this one is like super wholesome What's wrong with being on drugs <laughs> yeah I mean, like being on drugs is great but, like, problem with drugs you know, reagan creeping on people's uh, the problem <laughs> people like cosplaying and doing coke and creeping on minors right oh well coke okay right. sure i mean the yeah. first two sound lit but the last one <laughs> um, <laughs> anyway, this do meth like a con. like a regular peasant yeah <laughs> this wholesome anime con it's just like all the awkward middle schoolers and high schoolers who are there with their friends and like, you know, students. And it's just like super cute. And I'm like, all right, friends, if I'm going to take you, you can't make fun of them because they're just living their best lives. And <laughs> get in the spirit and enjoy things. I think I have some internalized anti like anime fan uh, 
what you call it? <laughs> sure. Uh, anti yeah, be because anti like uh, prejudice is good. It's the worst prejudice yeah, you've of our internalized, yeah, it's the worst form of oppression in the U.S. Yeah, I think. Exactly. Um, no, but like, sure. when I was in high school, I was in the anime club, and I well, I like really hated everyone else that was in anime club. It's because anime yeah, clubs well, suck ass. Yeah. But it's good idea. It's it's generally, you know, it's a good rule of thumb that like if you like something, don't be in a club for it. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. like the uh, if you love something, don't get a career in it kind of thing. Except clubs. Yeah. But, <laughs> yeah, I guess I hate club people. But for the same I guess reason, that's the real I'm also prejudice a furry that I have. ally. I'm a furry ally. <laughs> I don't let people make fun of furries. They're just living their best lives. Well, like I joined the. ACM in college, and I instantly realized that everyone like likes computers, doesn't know shit about computers. <laughs> yeah, uh, I like uh, I like computers because they they got the video games on them. Video vid 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 games, the Veg yeah. vid <laughs> Anyone yes. want to talk about Warframe? You want to? You want to? You want to not? Because I don't know what that is. Let's talk about City Skylines. <laughs> Let's talk about City Skylines. Uh, Let's talk about City Skylines. Warframe actually has the most realistic depiction Shut up, of Ryan. You've been which is just a, a, what, a what is it cool. with like uh, <laughs> city simulators and cops? Like it's bullshit. Like, no, no. like why? Let's just it... keep adding cops and crime will go down. Like yeah, that's no, to, it's totally you realistic. Need to learn how to write mods, dude, and write a mod that just makes the cops evil. Yeah, well, like not even like makes them evil, just completely remove them because it's just like it is. Because it's all about resource management, right? So, like, all the cops are just another resource. Like, they could literally be written out as, like, just I, a different resource you're managing. That's all it I is. I think what you should do is make them more like a, like, a sickness. That, okay, like, so they keep just, coming just back. Replace, like, people just keep appointing themselves cops. Oh, just, replace, just replace just, the like, word cop. Start killing in... random people, and then you have to, like, get rid of them somehow. You have to, like, build, you have to build, like, anarchist bookshops. <laughs> Just replace the word cop in the game with drug dealer. You That's remember, it. like, uh, SimCity 4? This needs more weed. Like, SimCity 4, like, if you didn't have cops for, like, long enough or whatever, you'd get, like, riots and stuff, which, statistically speaking, there's been more riots against cops than, like, anything. Yeah. So, like, what the <laughs> fuck is that about? Yeah, like, the more cops there are, the more riots you have. Right. Like, well, I mean, the cops are the ones who are always rioting. They show up in the riot gear and blah, blah, blah. That's true. Yeah. It's literally it's called riot. Exactly true, yeah. Gear. Like, what else are they yeah. You it's need not a crossbow a right factory. The cops show up, you know. <laughs> exactly. You know, like, exactly. like city skylines, you add like a cop station to like every block, and crime will go down rather than like up, like it would in reality. So it's like, what the mm -hmm. what the fuck are they doing there? <laughs> yeah, that's the one thing that city skylines really failed on. <laughs> well, it's just like that's a lot think... of things city skylines really failed on. Hey, uh, I, I think I think Ryan and I talked about this in like an earlier episode, actually, how like the Civ games. You know, and other like uh, empire building games and shit. Like they always have this, you know, kind of like Western capitalist myth of progress bullshit that happens, where like, oh no, no, this is an essential part of a modern society or a society of some era, you know, and you have to get it to get to something else. And uh, it's just like there's so much of this bullshit baked in to people's views. Of, I mean, we know this in the real world, but like you see it in gaming all the time, right? Like, oh. we just need to modernize. Oh, isn't it like uh, that one essay? Than it. It's like the fucking shit. It's got a, something about oh yeah, like the tyranny of player choice or whatever. Where like every like choice based games at the end, you're basically just choosing which kind of dictator you want to install. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, anyway, yeah. why aren't more MLs into City Skylines? It's literally the world they want. Like industries <laughs> controlled by like a single dictator. You get to add police all the time. Like I don't fuck. <laughs> They're know. showing their crypto fash true colors by being into Europe Universalis. Yeah. <laughs> God. Well, uh, everyone I know, what? everyone I knew in high school that was into EU4, like, went on to get, like, a degree in, like, economics or some bullshit. <laughs> I think it's, I think they're not into it because there's not enough, there's not enough flags. They like the games where you're, like, playing as countries and Attacking. That's true. true. Yeah, that's it just needs to be a map with flags on it for them yeah. to be attracted. Yeah. For them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, no. You just they need to make not... a mod for City Skylines that has flags and everything. Yeah, yeah, to be honest, like, you can add flags, though. Even doing? I'm going to be real with y'all. Flags are really cool. Yeah, we should replace cops with flags. You gotta 
No, because like there's the districts. You can set district policies. So you just like set districts as different countries on your map. Flags of nation states are bad because they represent nation states. But flags in general, like as a general thing, are really cool. They're just like I don't like flags flags that you decorate. I am anti flag. uh, (laughs) I actually prefer Uh, coats of arms. Oh yeah, noble family. What's the uh, like Western medieval equivalent for weeb? The, uh, uh, Yuribu. Uh, I've only recently Call learned fascists. about uh, Veraboos as a term. <laughs> Who are those? The uh, people, people that fetishize the Wehrmacht, or as it's actually pronounced, Wehrmacht. God. Uh, oh, there's also what? Russia-boos. Yeah, well, there's That's that. stupid. Yeah. Wouldn't it be Rusabu? <laughs> R- Rusabu. <laughs> Anglophiles? Um, I mean... Weeaboo doesn't has doesn't have anything to do with like Nippon or anything like that, so right, but it has like, to, like be the name of the country and the pronunciation that they would use. Yeah, but like Rusabu is funnier sounding. <laughs> Anglophiles yeah. for well, people who are really into Doctor Who any... and are really pretentious about the shitty tea they drink. <laughs> Just don't drink tea. I only drink good tea, so you know, drink tea know that tastes like, like duck shit. It's not pretentious at all. <laughs> Uh, actually, it only smells like duck shit, so... But you feel pretty owned right now. Yeah, yeah it actually <laughs> tastes I like... Really don't. Have you ever even tasted duck shit? Like urine. No, but I've smelled duck shit. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> so how do you know, Ryan? <laughs> the point of all this is, if there are any Marxist-Leninists who are uh, regular neighbor science listeners, they should play City Skyline. Lol. And also they should drink poor tea, because it's made by workers. I'm pretty in sure factories. That's like your favorite sure, shit. Like, uh, the, like ninety percent of the people who listen to this show are on right. Now, so, <laughs> are you implying that I listen to this That's show? Mean. <laughs> I, uh, That's so I mean. I'm caught up so, on this show. So I this show. listened to all of the episodes except for we most get, of them. We get two hundred regular downloads, so oh, I think we're doing okay. Let's go <laughs> on LimeWire. <laughs> hey, if it's LimeWire, that's fine with me, man. <laughs> Anchor recently got bought out by uh, Spotify, so uh, since we're an indie podcast, Goth Angel Centers will now only be distributing on Pirate Bay and LimeWire. <laughs> <laughs> what about Podbean? 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 I don't know who, that, who owns that. I don't know. Somebody, like, shouted us out for being on Podbean. Like, I don't know what the fuck's going on. Please stop talking to me. <laughs> <laughs> I would be Wait. happy to get a Podbean shout out because that would mean people would pay attention to me. Yeah. <laughs> Podbean is that like toe beans, which are cute. But hey, beans are great, man. Beans are one of the good vegetables, along magical with potatoes food, and turnips. Too. Turnips are great, and yeah, these turnips are really <laughs> doing me good for dinner. I do not like beans. Beans are an anarchist vegetable, I think. Uh, it's true. Well, the content we're looking I, for. I, I do like bean memes, but I think I only <laughs> like them because they require you to not like beans. You mean like the memes just like, of like small beans? You mean, probably. Are you talking about like the memes of like baked beans being in places they ought not to be? Yeah, like like you know, like Coca Cola cans just filled with beans, oh, yeah. or, <laughs> or the or like the one good the one, the Mosin with beans loaded into it. Jesus Christ! <laughs> That's real anarchism right there. Beans and turnips, that's all you need. Yeah. What about beets? Uh, I, I, ate, I ate beets for the first time a little bit ago. They were okay. Yeah, beets are yeah. like highly under- underrated. Oh, they I were perfectly put- rated. They were okay. <laughs> they were exactly yeah, what I expected rated well. when I heard about them. Beets all are the exactly... Make sure to decent. go on your podcast platform of choice and rate beets uh, five stars. <laughs> Five out of ten. I would rate them three stars. I think. Oh, um, you do that. So we actually have brought up beets on this show before, uh, <laughs> as proof that Europeans are stupid, because uh, you Cause... can make beet sugar, and they didn't do that for like hundreds, oh, yeah, of the thousands sugar of years. Stuff. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you can make sugar out of like fucking anything. Europeans Asians figured out sugar long stupid. before Europeans did. <laughs> the only good use of Kentucky bluegrass is turning it all into sugar. Now that one I didn't know. So 
I'm That's totally cool. not shit posting here. I'm unironically saying this. It's also not googling good. it or anything. It's also You're pretty good if you want to put on a dance, you know, like a, a square dance or something. A fiddle player, banjo player. <laughs> Bluegrass joke. I I appreciated it. <laughs> I tried to learn violin so that I could play an instrument uh, after the apocalypse, uh, mm. but uh, it's very hard. You should have learned the stick instead. That's a much better apocalypse instrument. What yeah. the stick? Just like whacking stuff with a stick? Yeah, like yeah. a stick. It's great. You, uh, do things with it. Bang yeah, it's the ancestor of the mistake of uh, just searching sugar from bluegrass, and I'm just getting a bunch of music recommendations. Told you. Do, do y'all mean drums? What are drums? It's I mean, the stick. No. I mean, the problem with, stick, the, the problem with modern drums is that they're very industrialized. What are, what, I don't understand what's going on. No, but you can hit anything you want. Oil drums? Are you an oil oh. exec? Well, you gotta you gotta play that kind of drum. You know, if you were to play like a modern drum kit, you need you need to constantly be buying new sticks. The you mean wear out. like you gotta eight oh eight with metal keys? Like just like, eight oh eight. Just eight oh eight. Yeah, like think... chains on chains and gears on them. Are there other kind of industrial it. shit? I, I play drums? the TR eight oh eight. That's it. <laughs> Now that you mention it, though, uh, steel drums are probably the best post-apocalypse instrument because they're made out of oil drums. Yeah, and they sound fucking awesome. I thought the best basically, post basically in short, when civilization okay. collapses, we're all going to be playing calypso. Plus, you could like all you would need to make the mallets for those is like you know the bone of your enemy, like two two bones of your enemy. And then, like you know, a little piece of like T-shirt or something like that. You just wrap yeah. T-shirt around the, you know, the uh, the femur basically, and then you just yeah. hit the steel drums with your little mallets that you made. Let's say save Good the stuff. T-shirt and just use their scalp. <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> That's gross. Apparently, the <laughs> show be playing like your is on. lost during. You think it's clean? Get the femur out of a leg. <laughs> Well, yeah, I think bones are less gross than flesh, personally. Yeah, I agree. It's only because flesh has a sh in it, so it what? just sounds like flesh. It's a sh, like an like an esh, you know, a good old letter esh, so it's got flesh. Know, it's more conceptual for me. Uh, I, I don't appreciate concepts. I'm purely <laughs> a literalist in linguistics. Yeah, we're not a fan of, of <laughs> concepts on this show. <laughs> don't endorse concepts. Neighbor uh, uh-huh. I'm actually, I'm actually, I only like syntax. I don't know what I'm saying right now, but it sounds right. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you're right. It's speaking you're of, on the uh, right side here. Speaking of <laughs> abolishing concepts, did any of you see that video that was going around on Twitter of like that white girl like running around like a horse or like a chimpanzee or oh something? Oh my god, I lost my mind. I couldn't. I have, it. but yeah. I would like to get the connection here. That's, I have that's not when you seen go, this. It's when you go full and prim. Is when you uh, yeah, that's exactly uh, what I would think. Oh, uh, <laughs> oh, it's like a like a white like a white and prim like running on all fours or something. Yeah, <laughs> no, abolish like bipedalism. More of a horse. You should story. abolish bipedalism. Yeah, or, 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 or something. As well as concepts and grammar. Yeah, yeah, by, that I mean, I, by that I mean we should develop one leg. Yeah, that's a that's a skill. This week I've been working on this really old computer system. It's uh-huh. like, I mean, for a computer system, it's like 10 years old. But like, mm-hmm. that's one of the other reasons I don't believe so much in uh, automation is going to kill all the jobs because like businesses have so much inertia that They're they will keep Windows this 7. old piece of shit computer system from 2008 uh, just because they don't have the money to replace it, or they like it's not that they don't have the money; it's that they don't want to give up the money to replace it with it's something same, that will work same, better. Same thing with a lot of enterprise software requires Internet Explorer still. Like, yeah, who, isn't yeah. that like why they released Edge was so they could actually release fucking updates for once? Because yeah. if it's still yeah. Internet Explorer, they have to yep. keep all the old shit. I've yep. got to go listen to a Nightcore remix. I'll be back in a second. Edge reminded you that. Wow. Okay. We're cool too, all right? But at least she's not an edge lord. Or dare I'd I say, rather be an edge peasant. 
<laughs> stem peasant, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Out I here understanding peasant. epistemology and shit. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a stem peasant. <laughs> and I'm I would say I'm an edge yeoman. <laughs> Un unskilled labor is when you actually know what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> so what's what's like a better term than unskilled labor? It's just like peasant labor, I think. The, the, okay, because like, the thing. thing is, right, is that they say like unskilled labor is the stuff that gets paid less because it's unskilled and skilled is paid more. So like literally, they're they're just doing it backwards. Like they just say that anything they pay less is unskilled. So exactly. it's just like a no, it's, exactly, it's an income yeah. classification. It really is. I mean, yeah, it's sort of. I think they should just call it lower class labor because that's what they mean. It seems to be well, more of. Um, a difference in requiring like higher education or not is what, what but I like, that's not even like. true yeah. anymore though because like the yeah, yeah, higher education true, yeah. is so like fluid yeah maybe you required higher education in 1965 <laughs> <laughs> yeah like when i was uh when i was working at target in uh 2009 so like right after the uh the financial crisis uh right. my uh, all the management there was required to have a bachelor's degree. They're only making like eleven dollars an hour. Like, also, like degrees are fucking stupid because I'm like a year at most away from actually getting my degree, but I can't do shit with like the three years of physics education I have. <laughs> yeah, or or like uh, my dad, he kind of like lost his job. He used to work uh, in financial stuff before he lost his job uh but what he's been doing for the past few years is he's just been an emergency substitute teacher at the local school district because the only requirement for that is like a clean background check and a bachelor's degree in anything and then they'll pay you like 25 bucks for that yeah the only thing that sucks about it is like waking up early but other than that up early and it seems like a pretty good job actually there's the precarity aspect too, I guess. Like, yeah. uh, you don't you, you don't, don't know, know that you're gonna get work. Is gonna end and... Yeah, and but you can just if you build up a rapport with certain teachers, like certain permanent teachers, then you can get like pretty regular work whenever they're out. Yeah. But a lot of teachers, though, like uh, I mean, I know this because my girlfriend's a teacher. So like, teachers generally don't try to take sick days because they have to make like extensive lesson plans so they still have to do like a bunch of hours at work if they're going to take off work and it's like on top of what they're already doing so a lot of times yeah. they'll just go in sick that's not which is good how we get measles the, uh, epidemics yeah like that's <laughs> that's the only way it has nothing to do with vaccines <laughs> gonna gonna make this like a whole tangent about how fucked the school system is sure oh. may as well you know <laughs> before you go off on your i was already thinking about it before you go off on your tangent, I'm just like scrolling Reddit randomly. You. Uh, what, what should appear before my face but the headline Issaquah High School employee, one of five confirmed with measles. Yay. Oh, fuck. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's totally Jesus. not near uh, where my dad works at all. Or my... <laughs> I love 2019 uh, where we're all dying from shit that we abolished already. <laughs> yeah. We got... I can't wait till your Sinia Pestis comes back. <laughs> it's, already, it's still around. I'm excited for the Black Plague 2.0, honestly. <laughs> One of the things I always told myself when I was when I was vegetarian was like every every piece of meat tests positive for Yersinia pestis. For what? Yersinia pestis, it's the Black Plague. Oh, nice. Yeah. yeah. Pretty great. There's there was like a headline recently some like tourists went on a hunting trip to Central Asia to like kill some rare marmots and they uh brought back a uh, plague, plague with them, killed themselves, and, like, their whole plane got quarantined and shit. Hell yeah, dude. It's sort of like <laughs> the part of the... story is that hunting is stupid. <laughs> it's part of the uh, Meltdown May theme of, like, uh, white people revealing that they're actually kind of disgusting with, like, bathing habits. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Plague and measles and vaccines. Ugh. That's just our culture, and we have a yeah. long history of that. What's the official so. neighbor science stance on leg washing? Hmm. Leg I wash? wash my legs. What? what, what yeah, you wash your do legs. You wash your, do you wash your legs when you shower? 
And I, also uh... I watch them. <laughs> Excuse me while I get out of the shower so I can wash my legs separately. <laughs> like, what, for a shower? Okay, this is my right leg day. Yeah. Uh, a, yeah. Uh, so you're like, you're like a bodybuilder. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Face, exactly. leg day. Face, like arm day. Yeah. Well, <laughs> as a certified gender fuck, uh, yeah, like every other day I shave my legs, but I got to shave my arms too because yeah. they annoy the fuck out of me. So yeah, leg day, arm day, you know. Got to got to got to keep it airless. Got to do it to it. So, I lived in a house for a couple of years that didn't have hot water at all. Uh okay. so I got into the habit of only showering like 3 days a week. So that's, that's real what I do. European peasant hours. This is this is a fun week. <laughs> Where's your god now, civvies? Yeah, right. This is the funny thing, because I was actually going to say, yeah, I grew up without hot water on the tap, and we showered or like bathed like three times a day. So it's an interesting nice. little uh, thing, right? It's an interesting cultural difference. Yeah, but the I water's probably this... warmer by default there, right? Oh, it's freezing I cold. This little, this little oh, snippet really? recently. Okay. Well, not that freezing was, cold. Uh, it's cold. Yeah. It was, it was an account by like you know an ancient uh, Anglo monk who was talking about how when Vikings would raid. All the Englishmen were I've worried read. that their wives would run off with the Vikings because they yeah. uh, were seducing them by not smelling like a butthole. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like the Vikings yeah. and Scandinavians would bathe regularly and like use perfumes and like groom themselves a little bit, yeah. and then all the they Englishmen like comb were, their hair, which is the opposite of the yeah. media perception of them. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah, they were actually very uh, refined men in terms of grooming and, and cleanliness. Uh, relative to the uh the britons yeah i guess like i can't i can't do cold showers because like i i think i'm just not used to them uh so like i i tried taking cold shower like last year because yeah. we ha we lost our hot water for like a day or two yeah. and i tried to take a cold shower and i was just like convulsing like uncontrollably it takes like, a little getting not even too. stand yeah yeah so, I, I, I can't do it because uh because them pores, you know, you gotta you gotta open up the pores with the worm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you close them right up again. Can't let yeah, you gotta yeah. You open, close. It's a oh, it's a wow. process. Yeah, I have great pores as a result of showering with hot water. I have, great... <laughs> I have great pores as a result of showering. Yes. <laughs> you got pores you could drive a truck through. <laughs> so help. You can eat food off of them. Please do. <laughs> Yeah, I feel like I feel like pores you could drive a truck through is actually the uh, the Republicans' uh, personal motto, um, but just in a different <laughs> sense of the word. Yeah, Lindsey Graham has some big pores. It's their economic plan, if you will. That's, yeah, yeah. We'll wait for that one. What was your um, uh, school rant you were going to go on? Yeah, school education yeah. systems. That sounds complicated. I'm way too <laughs> high for that oh, okay. oh there That's you like go oh good <laughs> the school system is hella fucked have you heard of standardized testing oh uh, i mean nobody nobody talks about no child left behind anymore as like a thing yeah. that we could get rid it's of it's super you know? fucked up it's like Even, like more fucked up is that it's purely like an anti-regressive system rather than like a progressive one because because if you score sufficiently high enough, right, that's basically stating like, oh, like a fifth grader test at a sixth grade level, they, shouldn't they then be put into sixth grade? Because like they're showing that they're educated at the level you expect them to be at that point. But it's more like, oh, no, that just means that we don't put them in the grade behind them, which is like silly and pointless. Back. Welcome back. Hello. Do you have opinions on the school system? It sucks. <laughs> not, not enough Nightcore in the curriculum. Exactly. Oh, there was in mine. Woo. <laughs> it's called not going to class because I'm not a nerd. <laughs> yeah, who would go to class? Um, Fucking quantum mechanics? Who needs that shit in their life? Yeah, I have a degree in Nightcore. <laughs> Is that a, like a, an associate's or like a... Master's. 
why is it called an associates and then bachelors then masters like well first you associate with someone and then you bachelor with someone and then you master someone well like there you go <laughs> to get Perfect. into a uh dare i say semantic thing aren't both bachelor and master like masculine terms but associate is a uh the view is an associate isn't. <laughs> is master a masculine term? Yeah, master's should like be called a... associate and and grammatically, yeah. Okay, because because <laughs> like there's miss and then misses, <laughs> and so like everyone's like oh, but like Mister, you stay the same, but it used to be like master then Mister. Yes. Correct. Is master derived like in the sense of degree derived from slavery? Because like master bedroom definitely is. No, master of the house, master of whatever. It's it's a it's a it's a title of a man who has power, basically, right? Who like, has yeah, wife and can command, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, like slavery in a yeah. In a, if you can title, command your army yeah. of wives and children, exactly. Yes, your um, army of White Walkers. My right. my, uh, my Mormon workforce. Yeah. Ay ay ay. Um. No, yeah. you say you say Mormon workforce jokingly, but uh, that's the, the, there are people who have said that. I'm I've never said a before. joke in my life. What is the Mormon? <laughs> yeah, what do you work for the FBI? <laughs> <laughs> the Mormon secessionists or something secretly. <laughs> Desert should secede. Okay, so let's go back to this Cascadian independence thing. What, what the fuck is with this shit, dude? What, what some people are dumb, shit? and you gotta let yeah. the uh, Northwesterners go in on it. Isn't it? Isn't it ecofash shit, basically? It's mostly just uh, apolitical nerds who don't know anything about anything, but I, <laughs> ecofash love it. It's like everyone yeah, I, that plays on nation states, but like lives there, right? Basically, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think like, mostly it's kind of a pointless concept, but I think it it has a uh, has basically like leftist roots to some extent. Um, it was developed out of kind of uh, the concept of bioregionalism back in the day, which was sort of like thinking about well, uh, nation state borders are dumb and just made up. So what if when we were thinking about the land? That we live on, we thought about it in terms of like ecological similarities of communities. As that's that's kind of where like the original concept came from. But then, I think since mm -hmm. then, it's kind of become more co-opted into people thinking like, oh, we got to secede and form a ecotopian or assert. Yeah, because I've heard it discussed in terms of like white supremacy, and I didn't know if that was because ecofash just like adopted it. Yeah, there was like a white separate... supremacist, or if it was because like originally it was a, a white supremacist yeah, concept. It, it was it was adopted or like appropriated by white supremacists in like the eighties and nineties. There was a big push in their circles to kind of like move to the Pacific Northwest to try to like change the demographics and establish mm -hmm. like a white supremacist territory. Mm -hmm. Okay, they were largely successful in like northern Idaho. Uh, it's still yeah. pretty bad up there, um, but yeah. most of them were like. Yeah. All the hardcore organized Nazis were sort of like run out of Portland and Seattle back then by uh, like a skinhead gang stabbing. Okay, them. so I'm really stupid with geography. What time zone is Idaho in? Wrong one. Good question. Mm -hmm. it's either it's either is it where you are? Mountain time? <laughs> it might be mountain time. It might be Pacific. I'm... I think it depends on where in Idaho you are. Yeah. I think it depends on where. It's funny that Mountain Time is just like named after Colorado. <laughs> no, I, yeah. Well, <laughs> Northern it, Idaho is in Pacific. Northern Idaho is Pacific. Okay. In Idaho, you can drive west and move and be an hour ahead. What the fuck is up with Oregon? <laughs> Wait. So okay, what what state is Oregon? west of Idaho? Is it Oregon? Oregon. Uh, um, and Oregon. Oregon. Yeah. Oregano. Oregon. Like Oregano is the Australian slang word for oregano. And preceding the uh, the the Cascadian idea, Oregon was explicitly established as a white supremacist territory when it was founded. Yeah. Like until yeah. the twentieth century they had laws on the books saying no black people. Yeah, until like nineteen twenty. 
Yeah. Yeah, black people were not allowed to go to Oregon. It's like really, really fucked up. Yeah, and like Oregon and Washington as well, like pride themselves on the like they're like we never had slavery isn't that great and it's like well it's because you didn't allow black <laughs> <Cool>. people <laughs> yeah. well, Washington just allow people, black people to settle here they were just racist to them and, and i mentioned it earlier but like one of their most famous tourist attractions is voodoo donuts which is like blackface donuts yeah you did like, mention and, that earlier yeah yeah go go on the voodoo donuts website they they not only have a blackface donut they also have a black dick donut Ooh, it's like super fucked up. That, that is <laughs> not cool at all. I had a <laughs> in their website before tangentially related time zone and geographical thing. I had a teacher from Missouri in high school, and like I, I sort of hung around like history nerds and shit. So we'd always make like thirty six thirty jokes, and she would like never get it. And it's like, but like, how do you like how do you teach like? AP lit and not know what thirty six thirty is. What what do they, what do they teach in that class? So I don't know what that is. So uh, can yeah, you explain it? Make fun of us. When uh, we the the U S established this law in I forget when it was when we were like creating like Western states or whatnot that every state south of thirty six thirty was allowed to be a slave state, but any state established north of it oh. wasn't. But it was it a, so a, lat- a latitude. Well, the Mason Dixon line is a different thing, but like, it, what? Isn't it? It's like the that's like the fucking. It's like a, an East Coast thing, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. But okay, oh, yeah, like, no, the, that, the point yeah, is that's, uh, that's the East Coast. I thought yeah. that was the whole thing. Yeah, but like no, because like Missouri was the last one. They created the law when Missouri was established because it's the southern border of Missouri. So Missouri was the last state established north of that line that was allowed to be a slave state. Interesting. Man, this country sucks, dude. <laughs> oh, it was, oh, okay. It was well, Missouri I mean, Countries in general. Oh, okay. Alright. Yeah. I yeah. totally agree with you on the Voodoo Donuts thing. I looked at their... their <laughs> yeah, it's like a black-faced ghost. Is like yeah, a, it's but, terrible. On, on top of that, their donuts aren't even, like, good. Well, like, no Yeah, there's so many, like, good. really good donut places now, like... Donuts they, maybe suck. they maybe they started that whole thing, but like, uh, yeah, there's like a lot of good donut places now that aren't racist. Well, <laughs> like Safeway donuts are better than Voodoo donuts. <laughs> <laughs> they have one shaped like a cock that squirts uh, donut jizz on your face. Have you ever heard okay. of a maple bar? Uh, yeah. Does it squirt maple jizz on you? <laughs> it has no balls. Yes. I don't know. It sounds Canadian. <laughs> <laughs> A and W cum donuts. <laughs> oh, it's See, good. I think I think there's a lot of room in the industry donuts? to move into milkshake donuts. donuts so. Okay, okay. I have this idea. This hey, is my whoa, million. Whoa. This Wait, is my milkshake idea. duck donuts? No, 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 no. <laughs> okay, yeah. my my That's idea. Favorite. It's my million dollar idea. It's copyrighted, <laughs> so you can't steal it. Um, you gonna do that? idea? It's not how copyright works. Yeah, uh, I, 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 I just <laughs> copyrighted it. You cannot steal it. Um, Trademark me. You need a patent. Shut the fuck up. Um, it's, <laughs> you gotta uh, get the patent. So you know, like how they fill donuts with custard. What if we fill donut with milkshake? I don't like this. <laughs> the fuck that probably up. exists in Brooklyn. Kind of it sounds like something that already exists in Japan. I'm sure. Here's a regional like question. Uh, your ideas. Is A and W considered a good place to eat normally? So. Okay, so all I know. So is I, I know a bit about this. I know about about this because I listen to a lot of Canadian podcasts. A&W. So A and W in Canada is good, and A and W in the U S is terrible. Yeah, because like I went to one once, and it was like the worst experience. I've never been to an A yeah. and W. Like I knew it was gonna suck, so I didn't order any food. But everyone that was with me did, and they were all like complaining about it while I was eating my Pringles I got from the gas station. <laughs> all I know about A and W is that it stands for hamburgers and whoop beer. <laughs> 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 Correct opinion. Because <laughs> like, because oh, like they have this whole thing where like they make the root beer at the store and whatnot, but it's, right. but it's not though. Like at least not in the places I've been. It's that it's still the syrup. And you can get that now at like any craft brewery. They all make root beer. Oh, Casey, we should go get Biggies. Oh, absolutely. When we're done with this. 
What the fuck yeah, is Eggies? Do you want to hear a terrible movie. sentence from the Voodoo Donuts website? I don't, but go on. Yeah, okay, it goes, <laughs> People have talked about Voodoo Donuts in Tibet on Easter Island, Japan, has some stylish folks sporting the latest Voodoo underpants, and friends have shared a buttermilk bar in Tanzania. I'm sure some corners of the globe have yet to be penetrated. Stay tuned. Ugh, oh my god. <laughs> this is this fucking crazy. Why does Voodoo Donuts <laughs> accompany sound like a sexual predator? If you're in Portland uh, and you want donuts, like, go to Blue Star. They're like way the, better. Uh, washed up punk guy who got into rockabilly to like prey on minor. It's like all oh, the. Yeah, uh, it has to be a rockabilly guy, huh? The fuck, what's it called? The uh, like the pickup artist books that are all like no, named bang. after like yeah like <laughs> like bang. <laughs> I I can't even like remember what their like naming scheme is, but it's basically just like by region, just like getting laid in that area bang, and Slovakia. <laughs> Yeah, Bang, Russia. Oh my god, <laughs> gotta oh, penetrate oh. Slovakia. <laughs> you gotta get that market Slovakia. penetration going. How do y'all feel about Czecho Chechnya Slovak Slovenian nationalism? I don't like it. Uh, <laughs> I like everything you said. You said. <laughs> oh god. Sounds the cool. Balkans to me are just the Balkans, and they all have opinions. <laughs> yeah, I think the best thing about. Balkan nationalism is it uh, creates really wacky music. Did you see the Hungarian thing recently? It was like, because uh, like they're in, they're doing the, the Brexit thing, but in Eastern Europe where they're like constantly complaining about like, oh, the European yeah. Union is forcing us to take in immigrants. And then everyone points out like, didn't you take in a, like a 30 at most last year? And they're like, no, no, that's not the problem. And then they like, they try to slyly say that like they fucking hate Muslims, but in like a good way, because they're like a, a white Christian nation, and to the south of them, there are people that wouldn't agree with that, because you know like the Southern Balkans and shit, they actually have uh, like pretty high Islamic population. Yeah. So it's oh, like true, yeah. So they're basically like trying to launder it, and then if you push them for like point five seconds, they'll basically just say the most Islamophobic shit. <laughs> Because like, cause it was like a BBC interview and she was asking like, oh, what do you think about like the, the foreign minister said this or whatever. And he's like, oh, no, I have to agree with that. Like anything our country said, I agree to. Like personally, maybe not, but it's not my job to say. And like, yeah, well, like, fuck you, dude. <laughs> See, this is a problem for me because my, uh, my quote unquote ticket out of here would be Hungarian citizenship, which I can get partially because they're slightly ethno nationalist laws, but also because the fuck is that, Chloe? Cecho Czesvio Slovino Slovakia. Let's put that in the show. How is that? This is my favorite podcast bit where we all look at an image that cannot be translated in podcast form. <laughs> we'll just make it the the image for the podcast episode. Oh, Chloe, I, I think, will absolutely do Chloe, that. I think for the benefit of the listeners, you should explain this uh, image that you've posted in detail. Uh, yeah. Similar, one might explain a comic strip out loud. Okay, so <laughs> we have an image of Czecho, Chechnya, Slovenia, Slovakia. Um, it's <laughs> it's. Uh, it's... <laughs> It's, it's like gerrymandering. It's 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 Czechia, <laughs> Chechnya, Slovenia, and Slovakia all merged into one country. <laughs> um, it's got the stats. It's got a population of twenty eight point five four million, an average income of thirteen thousand eight hundred ninety dollars. I assume that's U.S. dollars. Inkmo. The funniest uh, thing is like there's like I don't know if it's counties <laughs> or provinces or what, but there's like three hundred like subdivisions that are outside of it. Yeah, this is one hundred percent balkanized Europe. <laughs> Europe is completely balkanized except for Czech, Chechnya, Slovenia, Slovakia, which the last remains last strong. Of the, of the EU. <laughs> Czech, Chechnya, oh, Slovenia, Slovakia. Hey, look, they, you they, they the didn't. United at the end. They have a really progressive touch, immigration uh, policy, so you know it's all fuck, right. What's that place called? How do I forget the name of a peninsula? Who forgets peninsula names? Shit, yeah. what's it called? Yeah, well, Crimea. They didn't touch Crimea. Crimea. They're the good guys. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there you go. They're basically yeah. defending Crimea from all of the Russian microstates. Their, their anthem is 500 miles by the Proclaimers. I like how this is Average Ink Mom. <laughs> yeah. 
I already pointed that out, Ryan. Okay. Okay. Uh, the GDP is like four hundred thirty billion dollars. So it can't be good. Actually. It was less so funny when you bad. said it. Uh, I I disagree. I don't know who it. decided that the capital would be Prague, but I guess it is. It's like way on the ass end of the place. Why would you make it Prague? I mean, that's that's how capitals are usually done in like Europe and shit. Like, and the only like, reason our U.S. capitals are so yeah, centralized whatever, and perfect. The... Wherever yeah, the biggest techno is... shows are is where the capital is. Yeah. <laughs> this is Chechno, Chechno, Slovino, Slovakia. They had a chance to do things different. It's Wherever whichever it one's on the most polluted river. Wherever <laughs> picture plane has performed is legally the capital. <laughs> I got that one. I guess. <laughs> okay, so the last topic that I have, uh, and it's just because uh, Lee Carter just DM'd me, is what do y'all think of canvassing? Because I've done, you know, a decent amount of it, and I like I'm doing it this weekend. But I fucking hate it, man. I like, I oh, God, I well, I, I hate say... at strangers' doors. Like, I get so much anxiety from it, and I wish there were like better practices for me to get involved in, <laughs> other than fucking canvassing or like union organizing. Because like my my workplace is not. Conducive to a union, like who's working with old people? So... To a fucking union, Ryan. <laughs> I work with I work like... with a bunch of fifty year olds, and they they will never fucking give a okay, shit that's about what that because they are right, going right, to retire right, soon yeah, and yeah. not care. Right, right. So they're like fodder for the mill. Yeah. So my right. only other outlet for political action that's easily accessible is canvassing. Canvassing. Um, have you considered podcasting? <laughs> no, I no. Podcasting is, as we all know, the only good praxis. Podcasting is praxis. <laughs> podcasting. I mean, I, I also post. So. <laughs> podcasting, uh, posting, and gaming. The, the that's three. like worth hundred canvases. <laughs> okay, so I guess I am really political then. Fucking, I think they removed my like Antifa fucking emblem in Battlefield, which Fuck. strips me of all of my free speech and shit. You know. Yep, yeah, that's fucked. Like first of all, weird how the Nazis are complaining about that. Nazis fucking complain about the emblem rules all the time because they're like, "Oh, why can't I have a swastika? What's wrong with that?" Yeah. Like, I don't right. know. Probably the whole being a Nazi thing. Yeah, just yeah. in general. Did you know you're just as bad as them for opposing? No, oh, I mean obviously I'm actually better at the game than them. <laughs> Your emblem should be decided by uh, how good you are at the game. Survival Which, of the fittest. I'm almost always on the little end screen that shows like highlights and it's like person who actually fucking supports their team, this guy. And is that because you canvas a lot in the game? Yeah, I canvas. Uh, I throw bandages, which are actually propaganda. (laughs) So like, I don't know. Should I, should I get over my anxiety of canvassing? You should get over everything. You should get over canvassing. Absolutely not. You're perfectly normal. (laughs) I know, uh, canvassing is canvassing is terrible. There's a I'm going to break all of the social media rules at work here, but uh so there's this one guy that always comes in cuz he walks everywhere and he complains about how like people don't follow the world rules and my coworker was complaining about that guy and I was like, "Well, like not following road rules is actually encouraged in cars because like yeah. It, there's like this I whole I agree with that guy. Yeah, it was like there's this whole cultural idea of the fact that like cars are freedom, so why should you have to follow rules when you're in one? And I was like going yeah. off on that. And I was like, right. here, here's the part where I like radicalized my fellow gas station employees to say like cars suck. The smoking yeah. in cars is like eighty percent of our job. Fuck them. <laughs> <laughs> well, smoking in cars, I think, is okay, but you know, other than that, I think like. Uh... Like, I mean, it's, like, most of what's bad about cars is because of suburbs. Well, suburbs are just an implementation of the bad things about cars. They're not, like... Yeah, exactly. Right. The, suburbs, suburbs are just a marketing them. gimmick for cars. Suburbs yeah. are hell. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, lawns and, and that's cars. that's also why we, we keep sucks. repeating because of suburbs. <laughs> the suburbs are hell. Yes. Like, yeah. all the canvassing that I've done has been in suburbs. Uh, oh yeah, I guess that's that the main too. problem with it. That's definitely canvassing hell scenario is where you have to like drive around to every house you canvass. That's yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, okay, well, and, because like there's all these neighborhoods propaganda, with, like people right. with no soliciting signs, and they like, get like propaganda requires like constant exposure, right? in order to actually be effective and all canvassing is is giving you a a single point of exposure and like yet maybe you'll get one or two people that will look into it deeper but so same with posting (laughs) so right yeah Yeah, it seems like like canvassing it seems like it just makes people that are already into your ideas like like think that you care about (laughs) what they care about my tl is the subdivision (laughs) canvassing is just irl posting yeah, like, <laughs> canvassing an interesting is the... thing to... Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Canvassing is just the, like, 70s and 80s version of posting. Pretty much. Yeah, pretty much. Well, yeah, like, you knock on someone's door and go, debate me. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> I actually went to a guy's house who was, like, a conservative guy who was, like, I guess it was his wife that was marked as liberal. But he answered the door, and he was, like, basically, like, one of those debate me guys. Oh, yeah. God, like, right, that's how uh, I should have uh, the, the guys that had like the MAGA hats on today that's how I should have reacted to them was just like the fucking debate me kiddo to these yeah. guys that are like 60 something <laughs> <laughs> tell them your brain is in recovery from taking in so many high level ideas mm. <laughs> yeah I mean the border patrol people that come in the cops that come in these fucking oh, MAGA no. chuds I, right. I learned so much at work, such as uh, how not to say fuck you and choke. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually most of what you learn at work. <laughs> I still carry I still carry a lot of guilt from uh, working in retail and, like, encouraging being nice to cops. This is in, like, 20, right. 2014 or yeah, so. Yeah, because you're a cuck. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you know, like, uh, they kind of encourage that culture because it's like, oh, yeah, if you have any problems in the store then you need to call the cops of course well, like obviously i would never do that because that's like, like a, lot a homeless of guy is drunk and like he's i mean sometimes they're bothering other people but sometimes it's just like yeah there's a homeless guy that's sleeping in here you need to call the cops and get him out of there yeah. well like the thing that's is like very fucked if up. someone were to rob the store my biggest problem with that because i don't give a shit would be the fact that i have to give the police my information because i was there right and like that's the most bullshit like uh yeah like i've had like people i know have like mental health stuff and we were in a small town so they fucking send the cops over to come pick them up and they write my name down and shit like fuck you pig yeah yeah like it's I mean, fucking like i never called the cops so i i never yeah right i never had to give them my information or anything like that yeah, we had a we had a high quality cop bashing session at work today it was good nice right. yeah Pretty clearly that would bash. that would Go never on. happen with me because like all of my coworkers are friends with all the cops that come in. It's like, what the fuck? Yeah. Like, fuck those guys. I don't have coworkers. <laughs> Good for you, cuck. <laughs> oh. Oh. That's the other thing that makes me think that I my workplace isn't really geared for unionization is like my coworkers are super like regular, like liberal people because uh, like my, my boss one time was like, uh, oh yeah, yesterday I went on a ride around with the cops and like blah, blah, blah. And then she like specifically called me out. She's like, oh Ryan, you should do it sometime. I was like, uh, I actually hate the cops and they've like terrorized my friends. And so I don't want to do that ever. <laughs> and then... I mean, like when the government, when the government shutdown happened, they were like, oh yeah. Uh, you know, like, uh. Everyone needs to just like stop being a child and like uh, come to some kind of agreement so that we can like continue doing the government. I, I'm just waiting for a good excuse to just say I hate cops at work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got yeah. mine today, as I already said. Basically, there was a we were getting a delivery and they wouldn't. They were like threatening or the delivery person, like you can't park in the delivery zone oh fuck them so we had a we had a good cop bashing session after that it was good nice just park in wherever the fuck they want if you yeah. could please report the names of your coworkers and where you were <laughs> <laughs> so so did they like uh did it seem like they thought that the cops were like necessary but oh no not they at were all. bad or was it like they thought the cops were bad and they should be abolished uh there was no I didn't want to bring up abolish quite yet, but okay. we all were saying cops are all terrible assholes. 
Nice, else. nice. Hell yeah. So aren't yeah. your coworkers all millennials? No. Uh, maybe. No, not all of them. Like yeah, there's, one of my favorites, like half of them are communists. So one of my favorite <laughs> studies I've ever seen was um, people's attitude towards cops is like extremely strongly connected to the amount of exposure they've had to like actually dealing with the cops. Yep. Right. So like the more you deal with cops, the less that you think they're good. Right. You would think that cops would hate cops the most then, if that was true, though. <laughs> well, I think they probably. I don't know. Yeah. I think they are all like, that, that's the thing is that they people. institutionally agree with cops, but like they might like hate each other's actions. So, but like at the yeah. end of the day, they all like unionize to defend each other. Bullshit like that. Yeah. 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 Cops call the cops. Say... The cops call the big that? boy cops. Okay. The cops. Cops. Thing about brotherhood cops or whatever. Cops, cops too. Yeah, shit about that. You know, cops like, call the FBI. Yeah. 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 Cops, yeah. cops call the sheriff and then like shoot the deputy. I don't remember how that goes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so like, think about it like this, too. Like, yeah. Think about it like this, like, um, fucking, you know, Nazis and shit, they all hate each other, too, for the most part, you know, but, like, they organize and assemble together. Um, oh, that's the, that's the thing that, like, made no fucking sense to me about that. You know, like, earlier I mentioned that story about, like, the, oh, my kid was all right or not. Yeah. There's a whole bit of, like, he gets turned off to it because he goes to a convention and whatnot. But, like, yeah, yeah. that's... That's just sectarianism. Like, everyone loves that shit. Like, yeah. that just makes you, like, fit into your little niche right. of Nazis yeah. Yeah. more. Right, exactly. You get a click or some shit. Yeah. It's like, oh, this guy's internally inconsistent or whatever. And, like, yeah, that guy's an asshole. And, like, normally your reaction isn't, well, I guess all Nazis are bad. Right. <laughs> yeah. Like, the fucking Nazis are like, well, I'm, I'm a better Nazi than you. you yeah, you, yeah, exactly. You, know, you fucking stressorist. I'm a better Nazi than you. Uh, oh, that David, David really this is all going to get quoted out of context. We'll all David be canceled. <laughs> right. I think they were we'll talking just, we'll about just, that. I was born canceled. I think they were talking about that sort of concept on like seriously wrong or something, where there's like uh, the conceit of small differences. Like basically, people yeah. who are have share some sort of similarity to you piss you off even more for having. Oh yeah, yeah. It's true though. It's so true. Than people who are nothing like mm-hmm. you at all. Mm-hmm anarchist communist uh yep. whatever <laughs> i gotta say though and this kind of goes back to the joe biden topic i am more pissed off by people who say that they're like they agree with me 90 percent or whatever yeah. like like all the liberals that are like oh whoa you hate joe biden even though he agrees with you 90 percent like no he fucking does like, no not. like i agree okay. with him on like a fucking paradigmatic societal level like i <laughs> I don't know, like, where the fucking where the world he comes from is wrong. The only thing that I agree with him on is Republicans are are uh, not great. Yeah. Which, like, uh, Although I'm I don't not even think he really believes. That. Yeah, exactly. Actually, because he yeah. he thinks he thinks Dick Cheney is good. Oh yeah, but, no, like Joe Biden has been uh, like historically like work across yeah. the aisle. Republicans are actually good, dude. Yeah. So I don't know what I disagree. I don't know what I agree with him on. I think it's nothing. I agree with him on uh, saying words. Smelling people's, str- smelling strangers' hair. That's good. <laughs> oh, God, I co- <laughs> I agree with him on um, uh, posting online. Probably both agree that like cancer is bad, but I think we might disagree on I'm, pretty much everything. I don't else know after if that. Joe Biden thinks cancer is bad. It depends on who gets it. <laughs> like, that's, that's the thing. Is like we can probably agree on the statement cancer is bad, but then What's like Joe I'll be Biden's like, ad? I'm going to ask get, if he thinks cancer is bad. <laughs> everyone <laughs> no. should get free cancer treatment, and he'd be like, rich people should get free cancer Joe treatment. I wonder what these conversations Biden. are like in the circle of people who research cancer. They're like, oh, these fucking trash. People who think cancer is caused by this or this medicine on it, they're fucking canceled. You're out. The oncologist. Okay, so here's uh, actually a political economy topic, which is cancer research, uh-huh. right? So, like, uh, my company, for example, does they they try to do like community service stuff to, like, I, I think it's because the the CEO actually like cares about doing good things, but. You know, he has the mindset of a like a rich liberal person. So he pours most of his money into like cancer and Alzheimer's research, which are both like 
rich people diseases, basically. Because hmm. I think uh, if you look at fatalities, like, uh, you know, poor people probably are more likely to die of either diabetes or heart disease or, like, lung diseases from whatever workplace that they are in. And so cancer research is kind of just, like, rich people pouring money into supporting uh, longevity for themselves. And yeah. course, or people are probably way more likely to get cancer, but... Go ahead. I was going to say, poor people are probably way more likely to get cancer than rich people, but, like... You're right. Like of all the things that are more likely to kill a poor person, cancer is less. Yeah, and I guess that. the other thing is like they're nowhere near being able to cure cancer in general, or if they are, they like don't they don't seem to be going for the stuff that does that. They just go to specific right. types of cancer. Well, it's like the the classic issue of like, uh, do we just like work towards things that are immediately achievable or like more long term things? And the fact right. that yeah. you can do both actually, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and yeah. the fact is that they don't. They just focus on like these long-term goals that are, if anything, just like not going to be achieved within our lifetimes, which isn't you know bad per se. And then they tell us that we're we're too unrealistic and we need to think in small steps. <laughs> yeah, I mean, an interesting <laughs> thing about cancer research generally is like, you know, it's presented as as this big sort of like Promethean scientific task. You know, like finding the cure to cancer in general or specific kinds of cancer but what, or death it, yeah i think what doesn't get talked about which is interesting is like uh curing the causes of cancer you know because like, yeah, like cancer, preventative much, care it's very much an environmental disease it's caused yeah. by things you're exposed sure. to throughout your life um, like the ceos aren't disease. working in coal mines yeah your type of workplace right. nobody and that's yeah relatively cheap and simple to do but it's not sexy it's not this big premiere and if you're a new listener this goes back to the other episode that reed was on where we talked about uh diseases of ecology mushishi episode yes the the mushishi episode check that one out all this and i think that's like i think that's why cancer research is a rich person thing because the the goal of it is to come up with medical cures and not environmental cures. So the cancers that poor people get will not be cured because they can't afford the treatment. Um, but they'll still get the cancer because they're not, they're not looking into any of the environmental problems with it. Right. Right. It's, it's similar to, uh, going back to you wanting to talk about Brunig, right? Matt Brunig. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's similar to the approach in like approaching ecological, like climate issues of being like, we could uh like build some like carbon scrubbing machines <laughs> carbon out of the atmosphere or one right. of my favorite just, posts from just, him <laughs> we could just plant a lot of fucking trees uh build wetlands where we destroyed them you know oh, and, but that's all about aesthetics so yeah. uh <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> it's very similar to the cancer thing we could do this big promethean scientific achievement or we could just do something simple cheap that we know works yeah, so it, if you're if you're out of the loop on this, Matt Brunig once uh, got into an argument with someone saying that uh, if we could create a machine that sucks carbon out of the air, uh, then of course we should build that. And someone said that, we, that already exists. It's called trees. <laughs> you cut out. And, and he said, said, if we could build a machine that sucks. Yeah, he tried to keep it in the hypothetical and was like, well, yeah. trees are just, you know, really about aesthetics. That's the only reason that people support them. And like, We're going back know, to so the like, sperm bank uh, argument. Hypothetically, if, if the machine existed, <laughs> you're saying that you wouldn't support it. You would support trees over that just because. It's like, what? Yeah. <laughs> the machine yeah, doesn't like, exist. So what are you like, talking about? If you like I'm trees, Ryan, you're I don't a, uh... realize why we're laughing. <laughs> 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 you cut out. So it sounded like you were talking about a machine that sucks. Or, I heard <laughs> yeah. the machine that sucks. Yeah, a machine that sucks your dick. Yeah. Yep. That's wow. where we're at. So, yeah. so, so you're in the forest, forest with you're in the forest with a dick sucking machine. What do you do? <laughs> <laughs> That's Brunig's argument. Is anyone around to hear it? Yeah. I'd have to plug I, my ears. I, I think so. And you know what? It's it's uh, it's very progressive, so it'll yeah. suck your dick whether you have a lady dick or a man dick. You know, or a so, dick. 
<laughs> I like my non-discriminatory dick sucking machines. <laughs> yes. A protrusion accepting machine. <laughs> it'll suck your arm if you're up to it. It'll, it'll scrub your carbon, by golly. It'll wash your legs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it, it doesn't discriminate based on gender. It will suck your dick if you have a normal dick or if you have a man dick. Is it like <laughs> most carbon? <laughs> But, like, isn't most carbon, like, held in, like, ice and water and shit anyway, though? Uh, permafrost, right? Well, for the next uh, couple of years, yes. Uh, yeah, until, like, 2022, <laughs> then... Like, uh, hypothetically, we're talking about an actually working ecosystem. Where is most of the carbon? <laughs> They're ground? Yeah, not to Hopefully. mention there's, there's some, uh, there's some, like, like, typical, like, tech bro economists, uh, when people are talking about like carbon sequestration, a lot of times they're not considering like, well, we sequestered all this carbon. What the fuck do we do with it now? Because <laughs> turns out if you actually have just like an enormous mass of gaseous CO2 hanging around, it's incredibly dangerous. Um, oh. There's like this case, uh, I forget which lake, but it was like a large lake in Africa that a lot of people live around Central Africa. Oh. Um that had like a massive CO2 uh, just sort of like upwelling from its uh, lake bed. And it basically like killed thousands of people in the yeah, towns around. I read about it. Wow. Yeah. Hmm. So it's like so it you're like down down carbon and storing it in like underground tanks or something. You really got to be careful about leaks because gas is very good at leaks. Places were they like suffocated? It. Yeah, they were suffocated. Yeah. Oh, yeah. you gotta wow. put it. That's horrible. It's just like a gas leak you in your put house. Put it in vials and sell them as necklaces yeah. to the rich people, for like. Oh. <laughs> That's not a bad idea. You know, I'm I'm starting to think that Joe Biden would be pro cancer because it creates a lot of jobs. Yeah. Right. For anybody right. who's it interested, creates a lot of jobs in cancer research. <laughs> anybody who's interested, that's the uh, Lake Nyos. Nyos. I don't know how to pronounce it. Lake Nyos disaster happened in 1986. In Cameroon, it killed 1,746 people and 3,500 livestock, if not more. Yeah, it was an eruption. How do you spell that? It triggered NYOS. Yeah, it triggered a sudden release of 100 to 300,000 tons of CO2, um, which uh, rose and then descended onto nearby villages, displacing all the air and suffocating people and livestock within 25 kilometers. The lake that is horrifying yeah God. it's, Fuck. it's not in my like top, top 10 ways to die right. yeah i would rather be thrown into darvaz gas crater what are so, your top so... 10 ways to die yeah. from wikipedia <laughs> top 10 is too much <laughs> i was watching from wikipedia. Wikipedia. Like an hour. <laughs> you want to hear an account of a survivor from it this is from wikipedia um this okay. guy joseph okay. mcwain from saboom described himself when he awoke after the gas had struck, I could not speak. I became unconscious. I could not open my mouth because then I smelled something terrible. I heard my daughter snoring in a terrible way, very abnormal. And crossing to my daughter's bed, I collapsed and fell. I was there till nine o'clock in the morning until a friend came and knocked at the door. I was surprised to see that my trousers were red, had some stains like honey. I saw some starchy mess on my body. My arms had some. I don't know how I got them. I opened the door. I wanted to speak, but my breath wouldn't come out. Uh, my daughter was already dead. I went into my daughter's bed oh. thinking she was still sleeping. I slept till it was 4.30 in the afternoon. Then I managed to go over to my neighbor's house. They were all dead. I decided to leave oh. because most of my family was in womb. I got on my motorcycle. A friend whose father had died left with me. Um, as I rode through Neos, I didn't see any sign of anything. Uh, when I got there, I was unable to walk, even talk. My body was completely... Sorry, that was hor horrible. <laughs> uh, sorry, oh everybody. My God. <laughs> really uh, ruined my podcast mood. <laughs> yeah, when he started telling that, I was like, I really hope the daughter has survived, but oh, fuck. Ugh. Oh, yeah, so be careful yeah. with storing carbon. Yeah, yeah I read yeah. A, a papers about it Jesus. earlier this year that was like discussing that particular conundrum and capture. And some people, hey, yeah, just, uh, just if you have the option, just contribute to climate change. Yeah. Instead of doing that, it was, so what some people are saying is like, there's there are hypothetically ways to kind of like turn it into rock, like turn it into like yeah, limestones, and you can also liquefy it. But then you only have to worry about it blowing up. 
Instead get a of fucking up. dump it into what shit what's it called like uh what, what's it called like uh subduction layer or subduction zone yeah dump oh, yeah, it there yeah. the um but yeah like one of the i looked into recently like whether it's possible to create aggregates out of uh plastic like like recycled plastic because there's so much of it i mean not recycled but you know plastic trash um so apparently there's like uh like concrete and plywood type stuff that's made out of plastic trash essentially you just like shred it up and aggregate yeah. it with other shit there's, it's neat. isn't isn't trex made out of like plastic trash yeah it's like, like i don't know what that is but for like sure. decks and <laughs> siding and benches and all kinds of things it's like a wood two by four replacement one, yeah, one totally. of, have, you guys, have y'all heard of the there's a some dude and a few other people in Squamish are have made a machine that sucks carbon out of the air and turns what the it fuck into is Squamish cars. It's, it's a city in British Columbia. Yeah, fuck so you! Don't know what Squamish is. British, British Columbia? Columbia? You fucking yokel! <laughs> yokel! <laughs> Consider using Squamish. a tree instead. <laughs> Perhaps several trees, if you will. I've heard a multitude of trees works best. I'm Ryan, it was boring hours ago. I don't know what we're talking about. <laughs> don't read the chat on the show. That's not cool. <laughs> oh, it's not cool. Funny enough, they're turning it into fuel for cars, but our, everyone's favorite venture capitalist, Elon Musk, has, has uh, invested in it. I do love <laughs> Elon Musk. Keep that in. <laughs> okay, so, actually that alien like, so that sounds like a future neighbor science episode. <laughs> Elon Musk investing in cars. The weird shit Elon Musk invests into. I mean, yeah. I think we I think we covered cars pretty nicely. I fucking uh, hate those our, things. Our take is uh, cars are almost as bad as not having health care. They Wild. kill thousands of tens of thousands of people every year, and they're like one of the worst inventions ever. Yep. Yeah, that's what just I'm, as bad I'm, as the I'm billionaire. AOC's lack of a stance on universal um, uh, destroying the cars for all. Burning yeah. AOC, uh, what the fuck? Like, if you're really about that healthcare game, like, step up. Yeah, I think uh, I think there's definitely not enough stuff about we should have trains in the Green New Deal. Yeah. That's What's the name of that, that, that of uh, program where you can, like, give your shitty old car and they'll, like, give you money or a tax write-off or something oh cars for cash yeah or like cash for clunkers or something oh that's it cash for we clunkers. need uh yep. we need um cash for clunkers for all except it's for all cars yeah so a couple of years ago i thought of an idea where like this is when i thought self-driving cars were not like a figment of silicon valley's imagination which it is but um yeah like a like municipal governments could start a program where they say like we'll uh if you trade in cars we'll give you credit for a uh, ride share and they would basically take the cars retrofit them with automation and make them like self-driving taxis and then yeah, uh like a, you know you, you would have like a year of service on the self-driving taxi thing for trading like a, a car or whatever gun buyback so they should buy your car yeah and then give you a gun yeah, <laughs> perfect. Or a crossbow for our, uh, this is my new proposal. I'm running on this. <laughs> hey, cars gonna, into cars, cars into swords. I am gonna run for president, uh, and my <laughs> the whole time I'm gonna campaign while wearing an IWW hat and carrying an AR-15. <laughs> I am going to speed which of course. Run. I'm going to speed run the presidency. For assault rifle 15. <laughs> assault rifle 1500. <laughs> the year it was invented. I, uh, you see, you gotta speed run it using the the fuck. What are they called? The Gedelian argument or whatever. Basically, uh, you you pass uh, amendments to the Constitution to make it easier to amend the Constitution. Then you amend the Constitution to abolish the Constitution. There you go. But in a good way. That's why it's got to be a speed run because if you leave that shit around, who knows what? Will happen. Right. That's, exactly. That's what exactly. I think folks always miss with like the electoralism shit is like the point isn't you're gonna do elections like the point isn't to like get in there and stay there it's to like drive the thing like you fucking stole it and 
drive it off a cliff. <laughs> yeah, you know, there was a, uh, a Goth Angel Sinners yeah. episode on this. So you should check it out. <laughs> <laughs> you know. think I listen to podcasts? <laughs> one, this is episode one, two, or three. <laughs> this is episode two. Yeah, there, was one, there was one episode. It's called Spider Man 3. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like it's about uh, driving the state into the ocean. That's what, it, that's what I'm getting. States for clunkers? No, wait. Cash for st- ah, whatever. Fuck it. Okay. <laughs> States are clunkers. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Fucking outmoded. We'll buy your state and give you guns. Yeah. <laughs> the, the result of all of these programs is we give you guns. That's, that's our policy when we it's take the reverse of what, what happens when you establish a state is like you take their guns and you give them a state. But did you see the thing about banning imports of guns into the U.S.? Why would they need to do that? Make all the yeah, yeah, like the yeah. like the issue in every other country with guns is guns being imported from the U.S. Like what? The the US? Yeah, it's like banning imports of corn. It's like all we do, yeah. we make sugar and guns. That's <laughs> what we've always done. It, no, that's like one of the best ironies of the whole drug war was like, a the DEA literally went to war with like Mexico, but we all thought it was cool, so we ignored it. And like B, right. the fact that we're like all of the everything we're fighting are people armed with American guns because we gave them yep. to them. Mm-hmm. It's fucking brilliant. Well, some of them have, the have AK forty sevens, so you know. On the bright so, side, enemies oh, of the U.S. probably yeah. should have guns. <laughs> you mean like us? I think should, I, I think they should have mech suits. Personally, well, yes, even better. Yeah, I'm a real anti-imperialist. Yeah. Bold of Reagan to run on the platform of give our enemies our guns. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. that's fucking edgy. <laughs> oh no, no, no! Reagan's Reagan's platform was give our enemies our shitty guns, and we keep the good ones so we can keep fighting right. them, but never lose. Right. Mm-hmm. Exactly. It would be really boring if they didn't have guns, so we're gonna give them the old ones. <laughs> <laughs> this wouldn't be sporting. <laughs> It'd be it wouldn't be very sportsmanlike of us to keep all the guns. So the U.S. gets red carded for unsportsmanlike con- uh, <laughs> conduct in a coup. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of all that, uh, the best of us. Something in the headlines. Like, does anybody have an opinion on what the fuck is going on with this like Iran stuff right now? Like the, the oh, I have opinions. <laughs> Have opinions. It, they may have forgotten about that. Throw John Bolton into Darvaza gas crater. I That's think I just opinion. rubbed some jewel juice into my eyes. Give me a minute. Oh, why? It's more effective that way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> off that blood True. Right there. Oh god. Uh, yeah. Life was yeah. a mistake. Uh, we we on neighbor science stand with Iran. Uh, they should have nukes, and um. Yeah, that's basically it, I think. Arm your drug dealer. Obama with sucks. Nukes. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. On on Biden, the whole like argument of the fact that you can't necessarily say that like Biden's unelectable because he was already on the ticket thing, but like they try to expand that to the oh you can't critique Biden because well he ran with Obama and you're fine with that and be like I wasn't, I'm no. not. Yeah, no. Mm. I, okay. Obama is literally what radicalized me. <laughs> I, I like. I thought Obama was going to be great, and then he got into office and didn't close Guantanamo immediately. Right. And I was like, "Fuck the president." Yep. Did not okay. speed run. Okay. Here's yep. the thing. I uh, was uh, 12, I think, when the no, I was 11 when the when Obama got elected. So I didn't know shit okay. about politics and didn't pay any attention to anything that was going on. Um. But I just watched like videos of like debates and campaign stuff from 2008, and like Obama Horrible was a stuff. scumbag from the beginning. Like, I, yeah. I, who was surprised <laughs> by this? I'm sorry, Ryan, but you were an idiot. I, have... I was, I was 17 and 18 when he was running. So I have yeah, exactly so one it's, post it's, mentioning it's, Obama, and it's good as hell. And this was before, like, uh, I mean, YouTube was out, but it wasn't like big and like. Twitter came out like two years later, so like the internet wasn't really that developed. Like yeah. we weren't getting most of our information off the internet; it was still mostly off of TV. Yeah, TV was a fuck 
at the time. And I mean, it's yeah. still bad, but like that was basically all we had. Like, yeah. I was still like, I was still anti-imperialist <laughs> because yeah, you see, like this, uh, but... a lot, a lot of people my age, I think, were radicalized by the Iraq War. So, um, <laughs> you, see, you see, <laughs> the the way I was making money in RuneScape at the time was through lobster fishing, <laughs> and. <laughs> I'm glad we got Trubot's Obama post. I'm glad you like my post. Uh, so you, you see, like, when you're fishing in RuneScape, you're just sitting there clicking every once in a while. So everyone would just sit there talking about politics. <laughs> you want, you Which, want to play fishing in real life or something? I'll, I'll, I'll oh, yeah, what's screen. going on? I'll put a screenshot in chat. <laughs> Yeah, uh, RuneScape is what made me think Obama was all right. <laughs> That's my defense. <laughs> so on the Iran thing, I found kind of a good um, article or essay Indian piece by the Alliance of Middle Eastern Socialists. Sorry? The which okay. what? They're called the Alliance of Middle Eastern Socialists. Okay. Good. Uh, What's that have to do with RuneScape? Uh, <laughs> they're like a runescape game. <laughs> so they say um, they have this article that says escalating threat of direct US war against Iran is there a way out uh, they open with stopping the ominous drive towards direct US war against Iran it's opposition both to US imperialist repressive Iranian demands reaching out to labor feminist student press minority struggles in Iran and connecting them Connecting them to labor, feminist, racist struggles in rest rest of the region demands explaining the ne necessary relationship between capitalism and war, and showing what can. Uh, oh, I we lost you. We lost you. Huh? You lost me. Yeah. We were in uh, war and nothing after that. Because um, like probably how it'll all end actually. Is anyone looking at the differential accumulation of big oil companies? Uh, lately? <laughs> hmm, I don't know about that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I've heard of that, but I don't know. Well, one of the guys is from Israel, so it's probably n no good information. You know, probably. Know. They're both from Israel. Wasn't there, like, some guy mocking Palestine for its flag looking like other flags, even though, like, there's this whole historical, like, movement of, like, Arab nations or whatever, where they had, like, some union and, like, all their flags were based off some conference flag in, like, the 30s or something? I, I haven't heard of it, but I'm not surprised. Yeah, it was, you know, it was during that whole, like, oh, Palestine's not a real country, look at their flag, right. it's not even, like, right. a original. Which is hilarious. Oh, well, fortunately, that doesn't that's happen big. anymore. Nobody says that yeah. still. Yeah, like... <laughs> France is also not a real country because their flag is... Agreed. Just like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> it's just the American flag, but wrong. Yeah, you know, it's like if you told someone, like, oh, the American flag has stripes and there's red, white, and blue, and they were like, yeah, yeah, I get it. <laughs> it's basically the same as the British flag. Here's another interesting bit from this article. Iran. It says, uh, to the extent that this administration wants regime change, does not even pretend to be in favor. Of Instead, as Secretary of State Mike Pompeo stated very clearly in a speech to a group of uh, Iranian supporters, C. The fourth, the goal of the United States is to promote transfer of power and leadership by a group on revolution. John Bolton, National Security Advisor, has also been working close with Mohajadeen A. Kalak. If I said that wrong, um, a Iranian, Kulak? Uh, oh. Hulk? Hulk? Uh, yeah, an Iranian militarist <laughs> cult which receives funding from the U.S. supports U.S. military in intervention and was for years allied with the butcher Saddam, from which it arms and support. In the words of an Iranian journalist, Ban uh, Buzari, trapped between the Trump administration and the domestic oppressors are ordinary. They are offered a choice between imperialism and authoritarianism however miserable their situation might be continue to reject both mm. it's basically, there's a lot of uh organizing within iran against government there labor struggles rights uh, kurdish political prisoners 
So, so I'm still. I mean, I'm kind of stupid. So, is Akhmed Dinejad still in power, or is, was that a long time ago? No, he's he's not. Behind, the, right? He's not the president anymore. He's like the woke uh, Twitter representative. Yeah, right, right. Okay, okay. Uh, isn't it Rouhani now? Oh, uh, he's the he's the uh, woke Ahmadinejad who quotes the Black Panthers, but uh, gets offended when reminded that he's imprisoned. Oh, okay, okay. I don't know who's the current... Uh... It's Rouhani. But anyway. Yeah, I don't... I don't know anything about Iran other than uh, we obviously should not invade Iran because that would be really bad. And uh, it's clearly part of the plan of neocons since they like openly announced it in the late 90s. Yeah, what's so they trippy They said they wanted me? to okay, take but, out but Syria, Ryan. Iran, Iraq, uh, Afghanistan, and whatever other. It was like eight countries they named. And it, that was like their plan from the 90s. So... Right. What's trippy to me about this whole situation is like this time around the uh the build up towards them trying to invade their uh or start shit basically is basically has none of the like fake justification that I remember from Iraq and Afghanistan back in the day. Uh, they're just sort of like, Yeah, we're kinda like making up some shit, but really we're pretty much just, you know, gonna do whatever the fuck we want and tell you whatever and we're not gonna even pretend. Yeah, and then also, like, I think, uh, like, with Venezuela, people still have, like, there's still, like, an inherent, like, red scare propaganda element of it where people just assume, like, yeah, Venezuela's Venezuela's terrible because they're socialist or whatever, but then Iran is just like, well, they're not socialists, they're, they're just, like, their own thing, so, like, I think people aren't falling for that as much. I haven't seen any, I haven't seen, like, nearly as many defenders of uh, invading Iran as I have uh, people defending invading Venezuela. Which is kind of weird considering Iran of the two has like the much more like regressive authoritarian government. Yes, that's true. Yeah. So it's it's kind of a weird like double standard. And they're much closer to actually being able to fight back against the United States. Yeah. And they actually, like, manipulate, I mean, like, not to the extent that a lot of conservatives think, but they actually do manipulate geopolitics. So, uh, if you enjoyed this, uh, we might do more of these in the future to try and put out more content, but most of our episodes are not like this. <laughs> They're more structured. So, uh, check out some of our other ones. Uh, we have a lot of tags on all of our episodes, so you can check out topics that you're specifically interested in on our website, which is post scarcity. No. God damn it. Uh, neighbor, neighborsciencepodcast.com. Uh, yeah, our Twitter is uh, at NeighborsciPod. I am at Handle of Rye. Chris is at Solidarity underscore Goth. Uh, we got True, who is at TrueBot, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, Chloe, who is at Shit Post Scarcity without uh, vowels. There's, uh, there, there are vowels, just not in shit, because... Ugh, Jesus sucks. fucking Christ. I'm just going to put it in the show description. Someday, uh, someday I'm going to change is, it. Uh, when... <laughs> Wingles R. Wingles underscore R. I'm very impressed with your... Still there, right? <laughs> um, and uh, we actually never introduced uh, Chloe's brother. Can you introduce yourself? Do you have a Twitter handle? Hi, I'm Casey. I... I don't think I have a Twitter handle. Okay. You, you do have a Twitter uh, handle, but you don't use it. <laughs> I basically don't. Well, I'm... thanks everyone for joining. Fuck you, Ryan. <laughs> oh, okay. I guess not. Jeez. <laughs> Okay, uh, fuck everyone else then. Bye.